Okay. The, uh, okay. This I'm opening the uh, planning board meeting for November thirteenth, uh, <coughs> two thousand fourteen. It's now uh, seven thirty eight p.m. and uh, I just wanted to remind everyone that's in the public here that uh, that the uh, hearing is going to be video and audio taped. So the first public hearing is for the Pine Street Medical Building, the signage, signage special permit. Yeah. I'm all set, yeah. <laughs> Notice is hereby given in accordance with Mass General Law Section 40A and the Norfolk Zoning Bylaws Section <coughs> F9A18 that a public hearing will be held on Thursday, November 13th. 2014 at 7 30 p.m. in room 124 at the Norfolk Town Hall 1 Liberty Lane Norfolk Mass for Pine Street Medical Center LLC relative to a special permit application to allow exterior wall signage and a double-sided freestanding sign larger than 12 square feet per side at the Pondville Medical Center located at 31 Pine Street. The site is located in the commercial zoning different, a district reference assessor's map 26, block 81, lot 9. Application materials are available for public inspection in the office of the Norfolk Plenty Bird during regular hours 9 to 6 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Okay. If you want to identify yourself um, and go right ahead with your presentation. Can I take a microphone, please? Oh, yeah. Right. Oh. It yeah. doesn't amplify inside the room. Uh, my name is Scott Freno from Sign Design. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, Scott Freno from Sign Design in Brockton, Mass. And we're proposing a freestanding pylon sign, non illuminated. Um, it's all aluminum construction, it's uh, 32 square feet. Uh, it has the yep. name of the facility yep. in dimensional aluminum lettering. And then each tenant has its own separate, what we call a pan aluminum face. Uh, it's on a brick face with a nice limestone cap. Excuse me. The audience cannot see. Okay. Showing here. All right. Sure. Sure. Kind of hard for everybody to see it. Now we had really good. <coughs> you care if we can what stand. it says? <laughs> you care if you see it? <laughs> we can stand. And, and then, we put uh, it further back in the past. Uh, other side, we have the building letters, which are uh, uh, again dimensional aluminum letters. They're two inch thick, fabricated mm -hmm. aluminum, uh, with a satin finish. Uh, they're just under 12 inches uh, high, uh, and they're 21.7 square feet, non illuminated. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we took into the account the Design Review Board's recommendation to put the lettering all on one line, uh, and we also took into account uh, the changing of the color of the sign to be more in keeping with the brick facade. Uh, um, one of the lines in the <coughs> DRB uh, letter suggested that uh, the word medical center be the same size as Pondo, which you did accommodate on the building, but apparently yes. not here for some reason. Could you explain that? Um, I think the designer just felt that they didn't ask for it specifically on the pylon sign. Um, and the way the orientation of the layout was, he felt that it was better to leave it like that. And we certainly could do that. It would just, the lettering might be uh, very limited in size. A subjective thing, but so there was some uh, reference to the location of the pylons. Yes, signs. maybe you could talk about that in terms of what you've proposed and what you know concerns have been raised. Yeah, r right now they have it on the corner of the lot, and I think they wanted to bring it. The design review board wanted to bring it more to the middle of the lot. And um, Chuck Chiquetto, the developer, was going to be here, but I, I don't see him. Um, I certainly have, would have no problem moving the sign. I don't know what ramifications that would have for him being the developer. Is the site plan under there just to show that? Uh, I, I have the site plan here. There's a small we copy in your package. Package. Oh, yeah. I, I just yeah. need my shepherd. Oh, I'm not going to be able to see that. I'm going to have an eye chart. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> so do you oh. know where on that uh, they were recommending it be placed? <coughs> so, yeah, seriously. So they, they <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's an eye chart for sure. But yeah. The comments were a little vague, but they said somewhere near the entry. So I would imagine, you know, this island perhaps. And right now it's where it's highlighted on the yeah. corner. It's over in the corner there. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. I think that's a good suggestion. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I could see why they like that place in the corner, but it, it is definitely a better location yeah. in the center. Right. Entering and exiting, especially. Yeah. Hi. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think originally when people were talking to you, that th I think that somebody recommended putting the sign over there. Grab a microphone. I think I no Grab a microphone, would you please? I apologize for being late. My name is Chuck Chiquetto. I'm the developer of the project. I it started in the beginning when we did the overall project. Somebody wanted in that corner. I didn't think it made sense back then. So when it was suggested to move it to the middle, I, it's perfect. All right. Um, so what we're talking about, there's a telephone pole that's directly mm -hmm. in the center of, um, if you look at my entrance, there's a telephone pole directly centered to the window. So what we would do is move it towards the uh, Patriots, Foxborough side, because um, I think it'll, it'll, it won't be as obstructive in terms of people pulling out and pulling in on the, on the, um, on the other side. But move it maybe uh, 20 feet to that side, and it's perfect. The red we're in. So in terms of a setback off the road to make sure that there's no site, no line of sight concerns that, you know, I'm sure it'll be far enough off the road yes. so that the cars Absolutely. can still have. I, I, I was standing out there um, two days ago, and it's perfect. We pull it back um, just like all the other signs that you ha you guys have. They have to sit back, I don't know, five or six feet from the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So they'd be literally almost 10, 12 feet from the street, mm -hmm. and, and it would be perfect. And would this be parallel to the pavement? Perpendicular. 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 Okay, Two good. Sides. Good. Yeah. Good. I was okay. confused. Yes, yeah, that left and right thing. Yeah, so <laughs> the, 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 the words would be on both sides. Okay. So you'd be seeing it from the coming down the hill, it'd be easy. Coming up the hill, it'd be perfect. Okay. I have one question. I, I think it's a, um, a nice design. I like it proportionally and material wise. I think the one question I have is there's a couple of the names that are quite long, and so, you know, the font becomes so small. You know, I have concern about people maybe not being legible enough to read it. Um, and it also just, you know, aesthetically proportionally kind of throws the balance off a little bit. So yeah. I don't know if it's possible to either, you know, Massachusetts to abbreviate that, it's like MA, or to either abbreviate the names to make them so they stay the same font type, or, and I know this, as this is in parody, but put them on two lines if they have to be on two lines. And just. It just sort of throws the balance of the sure. sign off with like those those two smaller the orthopedics there, yeah. and the mm -hmm. Commonwealth um, nephrology yeah. associates, which again associates could be abbreviated or I don't know. Have you ever dealt with doctors? <laughs> <laughs> um, I could talk to each one of them and try to do that. I think Massachusetts for sure, associates for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I can do Commonwealth associates. Right. We can do that. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with you. Them that that no one you won't be them. able to read it from the street <laughs> if you leave it at that yeah, font. The designer wasn't crazy about it either. We do like to get maximum letter height for visibility, but right. um, I, it's again, I agree. No one's going to read the names. It's really that it's, it's all about them having their names on the street. That's oh. all. Um, so I, I agree. I, I will do that on 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 um, <coughs> all of them. Associates in Massachusetts so that take care of the three problems. Yeah. It's only two. And the only reason I stuck my, my the management company that's down there. Fine. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, that's fine. That doesn't bother me. And it's smaller, and so I, I think that's appropriate. Right. It's common. You see that a lot. It's called expansion. Yeah. So people know who to call when they need to complain, right? <laughs> Never. Um, I, that's okay. I, I drove by this morning, um, yeah, you know, I and there's a sign on the corner. Talks about for lease 5,000 square feet, yeah. up to 5,000 square feet of medical space. Once this goes in, what's going to happen to that sign? That sign will be down tomorrow. 
I didn't know it was still there that said 5,000 square feet because the space is, it's all, it's 100% leased. Um, so that'll be down tomorrow for sure. Gotcha. Um, and that, that goes away. The only thing I'm, I was going to do is, uh, because it's going to take time for these guys to build this thing, I was going to put a temporary sign that said um, um, Pawnville Medical Center, 31 Pine Street, because all of the patients keep driving by and they don't know what to do. Yeah, so I was going to put a temporary sign exactly where this sign yep. is going to go. Yep. So if you want to, if, if you guys drive by and you, you want to move it a little bit or something, you'll see where it's supposed to go. And if you don't like that it's too close to the road, you can, we could talk about it and make, make me move it or whatever. Yep. But uh, that'll be gone tomorrow. I was going to ask you if you were going to put the address on it, because these will probably be listed with the doctor's name and the address. It won't say, most likely, if anyone's looking it up online, it won't say Pondville Medical Center. It'll just say 31 Pine Street. Mm, so I'm just wondering, because I've done that. I've driven by places, and because I didn't see the actual entrance for what I was looking for. So, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to, to get the address on there somehow. Good point. Yeah, Even, good Even just call. the number yeah. might help. Do you guys consider that? We certainly could do that. We could, um, a lot of times we'll add it dimensionally to the base. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I'd rather not uh, rearrange that, but um, but if we added it to the base, it would be. Well, if you've got, if you've got bushes there, it isn't too long before the bushes start growing sure. and it'll obscure that number. Sure. So, <coughs> so, I don't know, maybe it's the number 31. Uh, it's, I don't know, you, you've got to do something. Maybe I think that's a great, uh, great point, though. You've got to have the number. Sure. <clears throat> the, you add something right to the top, like an oval or something, and put 31 in it? Sure. That'd be acceptable? Yeah, that's a good idea. Do you have room for yes. that? Yeah, does anyone else have any other comments? I mean, it, it, do. It, it, does it all look acceptable to it's acceptable me? Yeah. Now, the exact dimensions are 80 by 48 for the sign, is that right? Uh, the sign itself is 51 inches by 96 inches. Oh, okay, it's been a little half on. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, 91 inches? Mm -hmm. Well, if you add the, the top and the bottom piece there. 96 and then up 40 plus oh, 3 is 51. <laughs> How many square feet is that? Well, the content area is about 32 right. square feet, 40 by 92, so a little less than 32. 32. But if you add the cap and the little re reveal here that my designer likes to put on there, um, it's a little bit more than 32. It seems an appropriate size for this size building. Size of the building? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the amount of information it's trying to convey yeah. as well. You wouldn't want to squish it too much more. Okay. I'm okay with that. All set? Yeah. John, do you have any other questions? No? All set. Jeff? No? Yeah, I'm going to open it up to the public if anyone has any comments or questions. Betsy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Elizabeth Whitney, um, 26 Valley Street, Pondville. I love the color change because now it matches my house. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. We have our very first skyscraper. We're very proud of it. <laughs> so the big city is right next to the little hamlet of Pondville. It's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Um, does anyone want to make a motion to close? I don't think that anyone has any other comments, right? So, anyone want to make a motion? Sure. I'll move to close the special permit hearing for the Pine Street Medical Building signage review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We'll have your decision. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, One last comment? Yes. It's been great working with you guys. This town has been unbelievable. Oh, From the fire chief to the police <laughs> chief to building inspector, it's been great. Well, thank you. So thank spread you. the word. Thank you. Spread the word. Yes. You're 100% leased. When do you get likely to get a certificate of occupancy? I have a certificate for two floors. That means it's a low I start construction on the west. It's the first one. Yeah. We always say it's a case. And then uh, x ray oh, sure. going in the back side. That'll be DPH has to approve before I build it. Building, that's, that's the build out. Great. Congratulations. I'll just, I mean, urgent care is going to be opening up 
middle of December. And that's key, so everybody, yeah. it's like an emergency room. <coughs> Urgent care is going to be Excellent. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. This uh, open space special permit hearing for Winding Hollow. If you want to identify yourself for the uh, people at home. Winding Hollow. It's a nice name. This one I want to see. Good evening, Rick Goodrow with United Consultants. Uh, here tonight is Tom DePlacido, the owner of the property. I do have some 11 by 17 sketches. Uh, they could uh, provide the board. Rick, why don't you tilt the sign slightly towards the table a little bit more and set it back so more people can see? Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. No problem. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, sir. We can, we can share. Thank you. <coughs> Um, at the last hearing, we had uh, discussed the option of an open space development that included a future uh, well location within the open space. Um, and since that time, it's my understanding that the town had met with the uh, Trout Club and that the planning board should be in receipt of a letter from the town administrator regarding this particular proposal. Uh, we did receive that letter late this afternoon. I uh, did have a chance to look at it. I don't know if the board has and if they prefer to. Yes. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Yes, go uh, right ahead. You, you said that the town met with the truck club. Correct. Is there anyone here from, from the town that was part of that meeting? Were you part of that meeting? Yes. I was too. You were too? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, at some point, can you inform the board as to mm -hmm. what Okay. <clears throat> okay. The, uh, so why don't, why don't you start with the, with the whole issue about the truck club? Because... Or, or do you not know? Fortunately, we were invited to the meeting. Okay, yeah. maybe we can hear from um, Jeff. Right. Ray. I mean, I'm you're doing it again. Jeff's over there. Ray. Ray. Doing it again. You're Jeff. You're here from John. You're Jeff tonight. You're Ray. Yeah. Or whatever. Just don't call me late Tom? for dinner. Tom. 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 Right. Tom. Yeah. This is Tom. And <laughs> <laughs> you have to fix these signs. Yeah. Ray. You're all wrong. It's okay, Steve. Um, the plan. Some members of the town met with uh, met with folks. It was seven or eight of them uh, from the Trout Club, and uh, the uh, essentially the upshot of the meeting was that the Trout Club at this point was is worried about um, the ability of of them to um, have trout there, have <coughs> fishing, have game, and uh, we're concerned that the well may reduce. The, the ability to, to do that because of the water issues. Um, we, we had some issue with the, the well in Franklin. I think their concern is, is, is a similar concern that the, it may draw down the water and if they lose even an inch of water on their property, um, it could have severe impacts to the fish that are living in the ponds on their property. Um, they, at this point, are against moving forward and, and allowing the town to take any of their property. They don't want to do a land swap uh, of any sort. 
but they are um, they understand that, that there's a serious issue here with water in the town and that this is a, a viable location for the town to investigate uh, they obviously they can't tell us that we uh, cannot investigate this site and you know they can't tell us that there's there's no potential for us to uh, to, to look at this site as as a, as a good option for water um, but they said their, their position at this point was that they're against having any kind of deal with the town um, to give up any piece of their, their land they said if we did hydrological studies and they showed that the, the studies would not alter the <coughs> level of the ponds at all they said the studies could be wrong and they would still fight this full-heartedly no matter what the testing showed and they had their attorney there with the Board of Governors and they also said that uh, the attorney was all set to you know go into action and uh, so basically we, uh, we asked that you know if we have the proper state and, and uh, local consultants come in and attain that there is no change based on the uh, all the testing if a well was put with those ponds they said we don't care the testing could be incorrect and we don't want to take any chance and they went over the hundred year of the uh, existence of the trout club and uh, said they would fight any type of eminent domain and after talking with the uh, town administrator I don't think and, and one of the selectmen I don't think the town has any interest in, in pursuing eminent domain and any action or any level but it was suggested as in Jack's letter Jack had told me that just in case things change because they feel this is such a viable area that uh, they would like consideration to I believe work with the plan that we have in front of us so that down the road this if things changed uh, by some reason the land would still be available Are you familiar with um, the uh, public well investigation you have to go through um, maybe you are being on the being one of the superintendents of, anyways don't you have you have to go through the investigation it has to get approval from DEP mm -hmm. um, yeah there's a lot of science involved and it, it's, it's a lot of careful review yeah. but I don't recall if there's an appeal process to that decision whether it's just a whether it's just the state confirms that it's legitimate information and you can go yeah, forward they, with the quantity um, and quality the eminent domain part. there is but there is there an appeal to it being a good well site like I'm is there an sure. appeal of the of the of the science they would be appealing if we went to take it for eminent domain I know I'm just asking if there's an appeal right. process in the deep I don't know DEP. I believe once the DEP makes its decision it makes a, its decision <clears throat> most decisions DEP makes are appealable most of them are it's a it's mm. a you know most most of them are under under I just don't know if this yeah. one is mm. but you can't get started unless you own exclusive rights to the land with that 400 foot radius Oh, I understand it. and oh you can't even get you you got to do invest you got to do investigation you have to be you you are allowed to do <coughs> investigation aren't you not if you don't own the land outright with no encumbrances Is that correct how you understand it race yes. oh wow so well, how would they how would they evaluate uh, sites that they don't own do they have to buy everything up and then start evaluating and then not need them sell it if, if it's no good well I think what we're trying John's trying to say is that you can't go into a, 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 a well site with the idea that you may buy that piece of property or that you, you need some sort of an agreement between the landowner and and the entity that's putting in the well so you you couldn't you couldn't say we're going to get this property by eminent domain in the future you'd have to have some sort of an agreement on that well, it kind of doesn't make sense it doesn't, how, it how, makes can, a you, lot of not how sense. can you have an agreement on eminent domain you cannot no. right yeah. but if you had you a cannot. purchase sale on a piece of land with the only contingency to back out being that uh, we don't have an approvable uh, well site the town would uh, I think they said the state would then consider that us in complete <coughs> control of the land even though we would have the right to back out at a later date 
So I think said another way, the, the town has some due diligence to do um, relative to other potential sites, which I, I think at that point in time, depending on the outcome, you know, the circumstances may be different. Or the circumstances could change for the club between now and then. I mean, there, there's an element of time here involved. Jeff, uh, that's rather strange in, in that uh, the town has been exploring several alternative sites without any success mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. uh, is there an inventory of uh, sites waiting for, for investigation? Well, it's just a question of, um, you know, at what point the town uh, would feel it appropriate to spend the additional resources to commit to, you know, what is a more, uh, more costly um, <coughs> initiative in terms of you know spending forty thousand dollars to do a more formal study at a particular site and you know those are things we've discussed you know spending those resources to evaluate various sites but you know we haven't done it now may this may have been the site if the parties were all in agreement this may <coughs> have been the site that that would have happened but it doesn't look like that's going to be so there are other yeah. sites where that that forty thousand could be expended. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, Mr. DePlacido is, you know, and he's he's aware of one of the sites certainly uh, over the Lawrence Street area has been yeah. discussed, and it may not be as productive as this yeah. site. But um, you know, feel free to comment, uh, Mr. DePlacido. I mean, this this is your uh, your hearing. So, <clears throat> just speaking about the testing for the for well sites, um, I am. Um, familiar with and involved with other sites that um, there's no formal purchase and sale or anything that they've mm -hmm. um, we've allowed the town to go on and, and um, do testing and, and things um, that they need to perform to, to see if it's a viable well site without actually controlling the property so um, I think that can be done that makes sense controlling it um, but then they decide from there and having uh, lived in in, uh, in in another town adjacent in Rentham uh, been involved in other similar things, not my property, but where the town tested well sites and uh, then took them by eminent domain later on where they didn't have uh, control of the property. That was probably 10, 12 years ago. But um, it is done like that, um, that I've seen quite often on that, how uh, they test it out first and things. But um, there, there are other sites, one of which I'm very familiar with in the town, that um, they are looking at for, for potential wells too. Um, as far as this property goes, um, it's really up to the town. Um, I'm open to doing a development like this or open to just to do a regular cul-de-sac, um, as we talked about originally there. Um, basically, whatever um, the town thinks would be its best interest in the future, um, I'm willing to work with the town on with this. Um, you know, seems like it could be a, a, a very good potential well site, but all parties going to be amenable to it and, and I guess the bottom line is that this proposal doesn't preclude uh, <coughs> development of um, that property in the back the property where um, which would be conducive perhaps to a well a well site in the future I think that's that's the point that this this plan um, I think you know has support in that in that in that vein that it would allow for development in the future if in fact the parties were to come together or some some other way that were to, to, to happen. Yeah. I mean, I don't think any of us here can speak or know what's going to happen 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Um, this just leaves that op option open. And I, I think it's important to leave options open in the, in the future. Um, is, is the land that you had available to swap on this parcel or on another parcel? Um, it, it's actually, Rick could show you. Um, it's basically, um, if something were to come together down in the future, I mean, I do own on the other side of Holbrook Street there, uh, between Route 115 and the, and the curve of Holbrook Street. And um, actually that land could be swapped over or, or, or given over in exchange. and. You know, maybe Holbrook Street would be, um, the existing Holbrook Street could be eliminated. It could be contiguous. That would be something that in the future the town would have sort of as a bargaining tool. Um, I'd be willing to give that land to the town as part of this. So if Holbrook Street were discontinued, it would be, it would be directly abutting the truck club? 
Uh, that is correct, yeah. Just <clears throat> this is Holbrook Street layout here. This is the Trout Club property here. So if Holbrook Street was abandoned, discontinued, and this parcel here, which Mr. DePlacido controls, were conveyed, then the Trout Club would now have frontage in some fashion like that with the potential future, future roadway in that area there, which you can see more clearly on the, the other plan. So everything to the, kind of to the north of the new roadway would potentially be swamped. Yeah. Correct. But unfortunately, the land isn't so much the concern of the club, it's the water. It's about the water impact, or potential impact. They spoke only of level, they didn't speak of chemistry? Well, there'd be nothing going in from up above. It would only be what's yeah. being taken I mean, I just, down below. I, mean, I don't think there's a concern about chemistry. I'm just asking if, what they're, if they had any other concerns. Well, the gentleman... Um, I think it must have been at a prior planning board meeting. He, he did Didn't mention yeah. chemicals, but upon reflection and further conversation, I don't know that it's come up again in the context of chemicals. I think it's really just removing water from the ground and the impact on the, the wetlands there. So, so Ray, <coughs> the only sacrifice to allowing this plan to secure the back land would be that on uh, lots 9, 8, and 7, the driveways entering on... Holbrook Street would have a site distance problem, correct? Yeah. That's yeah. It. Well, it would improve from what it is today, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, it, yeah. yeah. It's huge earth removal. Yes, it, it is. It's going to be a, a lot of earth to be removed. Because if I, if I were to look at it, if this was never to happen, this is probably <coughs> the worst plan that we could possibly look at for what to do with this parcel. And Basically it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, in all honesty, it devalues the house lot, the cul-de-sac, but house lots off that is probably a lot more uh, valuable than, than the way right. it's being developed. The catch-22 is uh, by removing this dirt and not building in the new connection uh, to 115, all of that material they were removing was going to be brought across the street to build the road because it's substantial fills involved. So You think it can stay? No, he has to remove it to put the houses there. Is that yeah, correct, Tom? Yeah, but it stayed just in the same general area? Um, that was a, a lot of negotiations that would have to take um, yes. take a look at to do that and everything there. I think there's some potential, but um, there's some wetlands areas and there's a lot of things that have to be considered when uh, before mm -hmm. going forward with it. I mean, that's something that um, I'd be willing to work with the town on, but I think the town would have to be sort of the, uh, the entity that initiates it a little bit. Just to follow up from our last meeting, we had gotten the, this plan that you see just prior to that meeting from the DPW. I know Mr. Byron had quite a few questions on the grades. Uh, we did attempt to translate the grades from our plan to this plan. And just for a point of reference, uh, this contour here, this darker contour, 10-foot contour at elevation 130 to 120, back up to 100 at the Holbrook Street. Uh, 115 intersection so you're talking a 30-foot grade change from here to here where the you know the new road would start to swing <clears throat> and you can see this is station 15 14 so that's 100 feet 200 feet so it's approximately I'd say 275 feet we scaled from here to here but then you've got to take out you know almost 50 or 60 feet to get across the road so you're talking in the leveling area you're talking almost a 30-foot grade change in just over 200 feet. Yeah. Quite steep. Yeah. yeah. How steep is it now? 8% slope? With the existing... 8%? This is about 12%. That would probably, if you picked up from here and ran that around, you'd probably be 14, 15% yeah. slope Actually, straight down. Yeah, that's 15%. It's huge. And 15 percent would be 30 feet over 200. You didn't hear that. With no leveling area. 
<laughs> well, you, you know, you could. I, I don't know how many square feet you'd be theoretically taking from the Trout Club, but would you need all, all of the portion of that property to the north of, of that new road to, to swap an even, or, or is there extra sort of in this? The reason I ask that is that if there's extra, you could make the entrance on a Rockwood Road further to the uh, what was it to, to the north and. Uh, going to get the slope a little bit. Yes, obviously this road is dropping, so the further you come down here, the lower this elevation will become and then crossing, but you do have a wetland system in here, so the uh, further you come to the north, catch, the, the more wetlands you're, gonna, you're going to impact. You're also on a curve <laughs> on Rockwood Road. Mm -hmm. Over there too. Unfortunately, we're on the, yeah, on the outside, so the site distance should be, should be pretty good. I mean, you need to really study all of these things, but the, the questions that were asked last time were really with respect to the grades, and we looked at that. I looked at this plan in more detail and interpolated the grades. Um, I see a vernal pool here. I don't see a wetland line on the other side. The wetland line is this dash dot dot line right here. Oh, that's quite a big system. And through here. Is there a river there also, Rick? There is a river there as well, within the somewhere within here. It goes under Holbrook Street now into the Trout Club. Do you so know what percent? You know what potential square footage of uh, filling of wetland? In this concept here, they had four thousand four hundred and thirty-three. Oh, how convenient! <laughs> yeah. Under five, slightly Isn't that under great? five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, they had two to one side <coughs> slopes called for. You know, with a very narrow roadway and then the grading. You can see. The extent of oh, the so they were, work. they were minimizing. They were certainly trying to minimize. Is that the plan that was done the town had uh, uh, Correct. This, this is a plan that was done by Kohler and Cole Antonio for the DPW. Um, so, you know, from here to here is a 20 foot elevation change. Very, very steep. Obviously, you know, you'd have to work that in to the existing roadway as you were looking at the grading, but you can certainly see they were elevating by the extent that they were coming out off of here quite a bit. It seems to me like the most viable option in all this alternative is eminent domain, and I guess I wonder why the town is taking such a strong stance and absolutely not when, you know, we're being asked to consider a, a less des than desirable plan, it's a less than marketable and valuable plan, and, you know, Clear the Trout Club ain't gonna budge. I mean, they've been there a hundred years. They're not going anywhere. It seems like that's our one viable option, and so um, I, I, that could be the only reason. If if, if if they felt like there was any, I've never any gotten a more resilient no in any conversations I've ever been in with these board of governors. Right, right. So, th so it seems like the only viable option, and you know, I'd love to understand is is it really? ever going to be considered because if not I'd, I'd be reluctant to approve this plan if yeah that's why know. i brought it up yeah because I agree i'd be with reluctant you. to unless it is uh, unless there's somebody chance. showing some wiggle somewhere but if everybody's showing a hard stance no then tommy even oh, if we I'd didn't uh, right even if we didn't own the radius we could still go in and do a uh a short term well test right just to check the production because. And that would give us a good idea, what, you know, yeah. whether their their data really is on the right track to being valid, and then go from that step. Yeah, That's right wrote, now it's just it's just all yeah. conjecture. Yeah. You're talking to, on everybody's side. The first test side. is about thirty-five thousand, yeah. and it's a short-term test with a smaller type, but it does give them an uh, an idea of whether the longer-term test has a chance to succeed, and maybe we should get that test done before we decide to. To adjust the subdivision, and, and I agree. Tom, Tom is correct that just to, just by to. not having a cul-de-sac, he sacrifices a lot of market mm -hmm. value on these homes. Albeit he saves some road construction, but overall, it's a loss for him. But it'd be nice to know, rather than just looking at the maps and the uh, the uh, geology, to do a test and see exactly what this was pumping out. Uh, I agree, and um, I'd be more than willing to provide access you know, for the DPW to do that. Actually, I've already provided some access for them to go onto the site, and, and I'd be willing to continue that if they wanted to, if they could do it in a timely fashion on that. And um, 
And I was told that the DP, Jeff could chime in, but I was told by Bob McGee the DPW uh, does have money to do that short term uh, mm -hmm. test. Yeah. <coughs> so. Well, yeah. Any other comments, Paul? Yes, and just, just to continue, and, uh, we, Jeff, could you uh, respond to, to uh, the point that was raised? Well, I, you know, I, I think it's really um, a matter of allowing some time to look at what the options are. Uh, this meeting took place just last Thursday night here with the Trout Club, so uh, I should say the Fishing Game Club. So I think um, I'm not sure that, Ray, you've had a whole lot of time really to speak with um, whether it's the DPW and other uh, parties in terms of what the various options might be if this is no longer, let's say, the first prize in terms of, you know, where the well um, might be located. I think, you know, just philosophically, eminent domain, I think, is um, a last resort, typically. And I think we just want to do the due diligence to make sure that it is, in fact, a last resort if the town were to take that type of action. So. You know, a week is not a long time in terms of no. sorting through that. That's pretty serious action for a town. Right to take, now, there so. is no other site that they would be willing to spend thirty thousand on that they think is that that potentially desirable on paper. That's the problem. And this is the same hunt that's been going on for, as far as I know, uh, nine years. Because I've looked at different before sites. Before that, with, hmm? I think it's been going on yeah. before yeah. that. Probably. I know yeah. about nine years of yeah. research, but nothing turns up even viable. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dave, Gino, do you have anything to add to this? Uh, is there anything that uh, well, you have comments on? The only thing I, I would comment on is that I don't know uh, it, the volumes that the well might produce or the drawdown potential that it might impact. But if there was a way to um, have measurements and assurance to the trout club that if there is drawdown that it could be replenished by pumping water back in but I don't know if that would just be circulating water around or if there would be enough excess to make that viable uh, so that that's the only thought I would have to add and Ray do you have anything to add no other uh, than that this is this is uh, the most viable site that the town has come up with to date and uh, you know, I, I think the the option that's before us is to not throw it away, but to, to maybe shelve it and, and keep the option open. All right, so I'm going to open it up to the public. And uh, <coughs> remember to identify yourself. Um, you there's a microphone right here. Uh, Jerry Bloom, 30 Holbrook Street. Uh, I'm a direct butter to the old clay land, and um, I'm a little confused about a couple of things. Um, we talk about viable options. I could think, I'm kind of confused here whether the most important thing here tonight is a well for the town or De Placido being approved for a development. I'm here for the development. I'm not here for the well. Um, but I think a viable option to his development to use the original clay land without rebuilding the whole area uh, would be to put in fewer homes. And he could use the land just as it is without rebuilding the mountain at the end of the street or there's a stream that goes right under Holbrook Street. Um, so uh, in my mind, a development could <coughs> be put in there, a cul-de-sac, uh, without rebuilding the whole thing. Uh, but the well thing really throws me here I'm, I'm kind of getting the feeling he doesn't get a development unless you get a well. Am I wrong? No, we never said that. Okay. I'm, well, I'm just con concerned about why this whole conversation has been about the well and not his development. Because there's a potential for us to be able to come up with a plan between us that will allow for both a, his subdivision and open space for a well. Um, but it is not the most optimum subdivision that we would like to see. We would like to see what you were talking about is a cul-de-sac with, with most of the driveways off of Holbrook Street. That's not what I want to see. I like his latest plan, 
um, with one road into that cul-de-sac and all of the homes off of it. Yeah. It would be it's crazy, crazy to have about. Yeah, it would all be the crazy driveways to have off of the cul-de-sac and not all the and driveways not off, off of Street. 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 Yeah, okay. That's that's not what this plan is though. Did, maybe you can I didn't see that plan. I just saw this. I'm sorry. It was it we could see it. See 1 2 3 4 5 <coughs> 6 7 8 9. Yeah, he doesn't like that. This is the one we're talking. This is the one he's presenting. Yeah. Okay. Well, this I have the one that I was given today when I went to the planning board, and that's not what I was given. I, I would definitely object to that one because I think Holbrook Street would be very dangerous at the end that's there for people to come out of their driveways. And also, having owned my land for 30 years, I'd also object to seeing the topography of Holbrook Street changed because. It's a rural road. It's a country road, and the plan with the cul-de-sac going in where the greaves, where the stone pillar is there, the cul-de-sac going in there, and all the people safely coming in and out of their driveways would, in my mind, be a better plan. We agree with you. <laughs> What's that? And anybody this, else? This just came in today. <coughs> we just got this right now. The one he's presenting tonight. Steve? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where? Oh, I have that oh, okay. Go right I have that older yeah. one, too. From, yeah. From la last right. time it's we last saw time presented we was the one that you had. Yeah. Ben Rogers, 12 Holbrook Street, also a member of the Board of Governors of the Trail Company. <coughs> and I uh, heard eminent domain <laughs> mentioned tonight. Um, probably the first time it's going to be in the minutes. But I've heard it mentioned before. And as we mentioned we had our meeting last Thursday with a bunch of the members of different committees that um, we are not amenable to this and it's more than just the quality and quantity of our water but we have an access road into the I guess it would be the west side of our property there that we would be losing if that's taken and we use that road for maintenance to our property and the guy that's the head of the water said, that's a done deal. We can't do it when we mention that. Well, th th there's <coughs> a little confusion there. <coughs> because if there's a swap of land, whatever access you have from that west side of the property would be yours anyway. If no. there's a swap of land, that access point becomes yours anyway. No. He said that. They would have to have total control, and nobody else could access that. Yeah, they did future checking. Uh, ben and I had a conversation the other morning with the, uh, the members, and we talked about having, uh, and they checked with the DEP, giving them a, per uh, a permanent easement to the cot path to access and service their ponds, even though the town owned that land, uh, only exclusive to them. and. The initial checking with the state said that would be acceptable and still be considered total ownership and control. Well, so that's the, the, what I got out of that meeting was the only thing left remaining is the is the, uh, the, the water level of the pond. Slightly different from what I read about the zone well, zone well controls of the land. That could be. I'm just and telling you what, what was discussed. Yeah. Yeah. That's an issue, obviously. Yes. Yeah. And it's got to be investigated. And so the road is physically within the 400 foot radius your is on is on your section of the property in yes. the 400 foot radius but where the road wants to get to is outside the 400 foot radius yes okay so it would block us off and it's next to the stream mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's been accessed for the club for a hundred years right no I understand you need the access yes yeah. but that something that time could probably help with too. You know, I I've taken a look at it now several times, just different aspects of the project. I personally think that that could be worked out in terms of access, so that the club wouldn't lose access, you know, reasonable access. I I, I think it could be worked out. I, I can't, you know, go through all the details because this is just based on my observations. You know, having driven up and down the road several times over there but um, you know to separate 
the well from the project if we can. Um, <coughs> I'd like to you know revisit the the layout here and revisit some concepts that um, were discussed at prior meetings. So, um, so that's my comment as far as your specific question. As I, I think it could be managed in terms of the land part of the concern. I think the well the that's concern as far yeah, as water. Yeah, that's, that's something that has other. to be worked through with the state because so. that's their law. That's not mine. The other, my other concern is someone who's lived in, on Holbrook Street my whole life is driving around that corner. Mm -hmm. I've never had a problem, but I've driven by a lot of people that do have a problem on that street. And the reconfiguration and putting more driveways out onto that street is going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. um, the cul-de-sac, to me, is the best way to go. I've, I've driven up that road and seen police cars down in, in the woods. It's just, it's not easy, but I didn't lay out the road. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Anybody else? Any other comments? Um, Steve. Yes. Might I? Um, yep. Not my day job, Tom, so, you know, I'm going to just make some comments and if there are some practical concerns that it can't be done so be it um, you know at one point you know one of the comments I made is might it be possible and you know might these homes still be attractive and very marketable if there was access from the backside you know orient the house the houses uh, at least, you know, the three or four houses on that side of the development have access from the backside. Um, so, in terms of the placement of the cul-de-sac and what that means in terms of how to get to the backside and what the implications are to the 400-foot radius, um, I know that there's some other impact to doing that, but that area is so wooded and such, I don't know that it would um, look aesthetically un unpleasing to the eye to have homes um, that are facing out onto Holbrook as opposed to having the home homes face you know the other direction so so I said that another way have the homes facing inward as opposed to out out onto Holbrook um, I mean in that scenario if if it's possible I mean now nothing needs to be done with Holbrook at least at this point in time um, if in fact that was feasible I'm not sure it is I mean can you comment about that I mean gentlemen have spent a lot of time looking at the cuts and fills and dimensions out there if I if I may are you suggesting some type of driveway running to the a shared drive a shared drive don't know to if the it's back? a shared drive just you know really long road with it out of second access as I understand it Jeff, it can't be on the 400 foot radius property it has to be mm -hmm. on yeah. the developed property here so correct <coughs> it does sure. impinge on the on the yeah. square footage of yeah, those lots. are 20,000 square feet as they are correct we, we've been down this road once in yeah. an earlier meeting mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately once we got to the point where we couldn't put it on the on the property that's within the 400 foot radius it didn't seem to make sense so dimensionally here as far as these lots um, I'm not sure if one of these plans has the dimensions of the lots I mean how many f feet are we talking off what what's the to the to the rear lot lines of, of some of these property they vary <clears throat> I only bring it up because I'm not hearing another good option you know I yeah. mean well, yeah you know for instance this lot line here is about 125 feet deep at that point there obviously that's the narrowest uh, the lot line between seven and eight is approximately 200 feet here so they are you know fairly shallow depth lots 
So how wide would a, would a common drive back there have to be? That'd really be the preference of the board. I mean, obviously, we'd like to minimize it, mm -hmm. 16, 18 feet, something along those lines. I wonder what would happen to four. Okay. GM, are we allowed to have shared drives in a residential area? I don't believe so. Uh, well, the zoning requires access. access from the frontage. So if the frontage is on mm -hmm. Holbrook, <coughs> and, and, if, and as was already pointed out, if you try to make the Sear driveway uh, a roadway with, with uh, uh, waivers, then it takes away from the lot size. Right. Um, so, yeah, it would require a zoning change, essentially. It, it, it can't just be a, a shared or, or drive? Or variance. Because they are getting their access from Holbrook. They just happen to be going around the houses. <laughs> well, <laughs> they are getting their access from Holbrook Street, right? Not and they, their frontage. I think your not driveway front has to right. be where the, your, the street number, is, the yeah. driver has to be on your frontage. It's not. The, I mean, this lot number eight's frontage is from here to here. Well, we lot had shared eight. drives over on the other side of Holbrook Street. As part of the, uh, the um, yeah, but know, weren't they? No, weren't no, those no. like straddling the lot line? I, I, I could speak on that. That's <laughs> your project <laughs> too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, um, no, it's it's one of our projects that we've developed there, and actually the the they're laid out in such a way. Um, the lots are a little bit dog leg shaped, a little bit with their frontage, and the way the driveway is configured. Actually, technically, they have like a nine to ten foot wide paved access on their frontage to their lot, the way it was developed. So there's it, do they share asphalt, I guess you'd say? Yes, but technically they can get to their, to their house without going on another lot line. So it's straddled. Well, maybe if it's they walked, so but not if they drove their car, they'd be, um, yeah. Actually, actually uh, the building inspector, to his credit, made me make it a certain width so a ah. car could get through there. To, to conform to zoning. <coughs> okay. So that's as narrow as it could be. And how many houses Nine. share the drive? Three? Is it three? Yeah. <laughs> I believe there's five that share like a loop, but there's three different points of access on that loop. Oh. Okay. Anybody else? Anyone else have any other comments? No? So what's our next step forward? Is it going to be, uh, are you going to get some additional information from the town or find out what's going on? I'm not sure exactly, I mean, h how we should advance with this because I, I think that a lot of the people on this end are thinking, well, if the, if the well's not going to go forward ever, then this is probably the last uh, the choice that I would make for a, for a subdivision. Yeah. Yeah. So if, um, how, how do you want to go forward with this? I mean, we've um, had some discussions with the, with um, town administrator DPW. I think the 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 way that town administrator is speaking for the selectmen in that <laughs> letter, um, you know, would like to set this aside. I think it should be tested out or whatever you know needs to be done to see if it is a viable well site. Um, I don't know what kind of time that would take, but uh, I would like to be able to move forward with the project sometime in the spring. I don't blame you. Yeah. So do you want to just continue this till the springtime? Well, I'd like to be able to construct the road and stuff in the springtime. But oh, thanks, you know. he wasn't. <laughs> oh, I, that's not what I heard you say. So, so, what you so said, January. Put it aside, huh? January. I know. Okay, we'll put it out till January. Wait, does that does that make sense? Well, I. I that's a, I mean, I know we're coming up on the holidays and things, but um, I mean, I don't know what it's going to take for the town to test this. You know, if you, if you think this through, we're asking to have a substandard plan for a future potential for a well. Now, the town selectmen, including one of our board members, have decided they don't have no interest in eminent domain. But they're asking us to set aside something for an unknown future and create a bad subdivision for something they won't do now. And they won't do this now after eight years of research into wells and the town has a 10% capacity for future growth. So to me, it's either 
do this now and try for the well now or don't ask us to put the thing aside for the future because it doesn't balance out to me. I think you're, another way of saying it is you'd like them to investigate whether or not this is a real Do it or not. Or not. Why, why, why make a, a substandard subdivision design for the, and, and nobody wants to move forward right now? And <coughs> it doesn't make any sense. Nobody has enough information to move no, forward. No, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, that's basically, I, I, I concur with, with Mr. Weddleton. I mean, the town really should go out there and test it. I'll give them the access to it, hopefully get it done in the next, whatever they can do, two weeks or four weeks or whatever it may be, um, and find out if it's worthwhile, if it's, you know, this could be a moot point if there's nothing there, or if, you know, if it's something valuable, maybe they decide to. Um, I'm flexible with things, but I just want to know which way the town would, would like us to go. Well, do you want to reopen this in, say, like the beginning of February or something like that? It's a little bit too far. I mean, I'd like to do like December or something and just, and you know, just continue it well, to I'll that. that. But we'll you know. only be meeting what December 9th. That's probably the only meeting that we'll have in December. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which means we'll need one at the very beginning of January. Yeah, would would be meeting at the beginning of January. So it's either December 9th or it's going to be at some other date in January at the beginning. Uh, I mean, continuing it to December 9th, I don't think hurts anything. We could continue it from there, but I mean, I, I really, um, if this board could write a letter to the selectman, <coughs> DPW, asking them to move forward with, a, you know, some type of well testing so we can mm -hmm. get a decision here. I mean, I feel like I'm just sort of being stuck in limbo. You are. You, you are. Continue. You are. <coughs> yeah. You've been very kind and patient. <coughs> I think Mr. Weddleson's proposal is, uh, is something I would support, too, so. All right, so <clears throat> I'll make a motion to continue this hearing to um, December 9th. Do we have anything scheduled? Yeah, it's at 7.30 and 7.00. Okay, for 8 o'clock on December 9th. Do I have a second? Yep, second. Those in favor? 8 o'clock. Uh, right. yeah. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Yes. Well, the hearing's closed, but is it something that you, you want? Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion to reopen the hearing for uh, this. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, go right ahead. I think our stance has always been that once the shovel goes in the, round, in the ground, the process has started. And being a lifelong resident in Norfolk, I don't like my money being spent unwisely, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to continue this hearing until December 9th at 8 o'clock. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Steve, just to, to speak to that, um, understand your, your concerns, um, and I think given some of the conversation that has taken place this evening, you may be best served by attending uh, one of the upcoming Board of Selectmen meetings where I'm sure you know this will be discussed. So I, I know you've been present for some of the meetings. I appreciate that. Um, I can only speak for myself, but um, eminent domain is a last resort. Myself personally, I haven't been involved in the prior studies. I've read a report in terms of the need for additional water to support the town. So. You know, as a resident of Norfolk, I'm sure that you're also concerned that the town has sufficient water. So we have to balance these things. I, I uh, understood. So I'm saying, uh, what I'm saying, I can only speak for myself, is I need to be fully satisfied that this is really a last resort for the town. And I'm not at that point because I haven't had the opportunity to review the details of prior <coughs> studies that have been done. And that wasn't so important until the word came last Thursday night. I was traveling. I couldn't attend that meeting. That um, the, the uh, Fish and Game Club was not in support of the well for that location. So, um, so we have some work to do. We have some work to do. It, it wasn't just last Thursday. Oh, I've been present for. The meeting is closed. Yeah, yeah. We can't be talking. All right, so. It, we're, we're done with that. So there's a request for a continuance of MacArthur Ave. Do, when do they, um, do they have a, re a request for a certain date? Uh, December 9th, please. <laughs> okay, does uh, someone want to uh, 
continue this till De December 9th. Are they, they're one of the ones that are, oh, no, it's the third, it's a new one. Okay. We're going to move that we um, continue the MacArthur <laughs> Ave um, hearing until December 9th at 8.15 p.m. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 242 Dedham Street. The, uh, discuss the DRB recommendations. Did anyone read comments from the DRB? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Anyone have any comments on the DRB recommendations for the colors? Anybody know? I was confused by the Whitney. orange, whether there's an orange stripe or not an orange stripe. What's that? Let's see Whitney's comments. Yeah. Um, I believe it's, it's here um, on the side of the. Oh, it is a full orange stripe. Yeah, the awning. I believe that's what the canopy, you know. And I know we have folks in the audience that can speak to it. And right. I know um, mm -hmm. Ms. Whitney's here, others perhaps. Well, there is someone from, from the design review board here, right? No? No? I guess I not. I don't see anybody. <clears throat> so. I, was, I read it as they don't support the orange stripe. Correct. On the lower edge of the canopy, that it's only in the photo, but was not in their proposed. Submission. The yeah. photo didn't necessarily match the design that they were. The photo is, that's what confused me. The photo is the proposal and design review is saying get rid of the, get rid of the stripe, right? Well, Help me out. In the photo, the whole middle section is on. He's right? saying the fuel service canopy was proposed as blue panels with white trim. It would and help. It had, and an orange gulf. <laughs> photo ring color. But the image, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. It's well, Betsy's I've fault. The, the had an orange uh, stripe on yeah. the lower edge of the canopy, yeah. which is different than what was proposed. So I took it as the photo was different than what was proposed. I think what the design review board is saying is that there's a on the lower edge of that that line, there's an orange stripe. Um, they don't like that. They did not like the clouds that were yeah. impressed on the uh, center portion. Which you can of, see of the, in the uh, black and white photo. They would rather have just a solid blue instead of having that cloud section on it. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. There yeah. Go. There you go. What is the, um, this is the color of the side oh, of the canopy? This is what was shows up black on the black and white. Blue. It's it's a blue cloud kind of look to oh, it. You have. Okay. okay. Blue sky with white puffy clouds. Perhaps we could ask the, the fellows who are doing it what they <laughs> think of the Who's DRB it? recommendations. Did you see this? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> you seen it in color? I always looking at it. Uh, well, so. <clears throat> Could you identify yourself, please? Yep. Uh, John Prempus, the owner of Dunkin' Donuts, mm -hmm. Norfolk. Um, well, we're just trying to do the the standard golf canopy design. I mean, that's just what that's kind of what golf's rolling out to all their new locations. So, um, you know, at, at the time when our engineer put the plan together, we we had. We thought that's what he put on, but you when know, we went to the DRB, I guess we were missing the cloud and that orange border on the blue band. So um, our gas operators are, you know, speaking with golf because they're going to be they're going to be doing it. So they're they're trying to see if they can get it, just because that's they they open they own about 15 shops and they are just remodeled a couple of them. So that's that's like the new design being rolled out. So they're just trying to see if that's even. Yeah, I know. I know it wasn't on the plan when we came back here a couple months ago, but just trying to <coughs> trying to see if we can if we can do it the way it is with all the other golf stations. I guess. Well, if you do it the way it is with all the other golf stations, it would look like that little color photo that we got there, right? Which which is the orange stripe on the bottom, the white stripe on the top. Yeah, I just blue in the middle with a cloud on yes. it. Yes, the clouds. The and new that's part. what the DRB yes. objected to, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They said take the cloud out, make the orange stripe white, and then good to go. Right. Yeah. right. So, so is you're that checking to see if that's they're checking to see. And if they're checking to see if that's possible, right? Um, well, we're, we're uh, so our our gas operators are trying to see if they can do it like the picture right there. Right. Yeah. Could you also ask them if we could do it not like the picture right there? Yeah, we did. So. That's their image. That's their image. That's their image. You you've been to dailies. Yeah, but. Mobile did it. Dunkin' Donuts does it all the time. Dunkin' Donuts does image. it all the time. They change their image for towns. They do it all the time. 
Could you What's ask the, uh, yeah. there's a comment here that says the photo image submitted of a golf station canopy was noted to have an expanded logo Ooh. colors <laughs> around the golf <coughs> logo. Expanded, I'm just trying to try, expanded logo colors around the golf logo. And it, I, I know about the orange stripe, but. The expanded what? is the clouds. Oh, that is what they're referring to. Okay, yeah. okay. And the orange stripe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you should have called it white puffy clouds. It's much more clear. Yeah, okay. I guess it's just worth asking the question. That way it could be a definitive no, they, they won't even budge. <clears throat> we brought to their attention, and, and, they're, and they're like, well, that's what golf goes with. I mean, for, well, for them. I'm sure they've dealt with communities like this in other places where they just say, well, sorry, we don't like it. I'm sure that they've. They've ad adapted to other locations. They're all also. locations. They're all in Worcester and Marlboro. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, unfortunately. They're all illuminated, though. So. Well. Then it's different from them. If you, when you asked the question, were you saying it was the town that was asking you to ask the question? Well, I, I guess. I guess originally our. Our engineer should have put that in the original plans, and you missed those two, those two details. So when we had, you know, went to the design review and, and they told us, well, it's not on the plans. We don't want it. I, I'm, I'm wondering if it was on the plans, would they have, would they have cared? But um, and now my gas operator is like, you know, th this is our design. Mm -hmm. You know, th this is what you know, our images. You know, the golf image is is that, and uh, and they would like it. You know, so we're here today to just to, to ask you guys if, you know, if, we, if you guys will allow it to, to be on the plan. I don't mind the orange stripe so much. I, I agree the clouds are a little bit. <laughs> I agree. I don't mind the orange stripe so much. But I, I, that, that other, other image that surrounds the golf sign is, yeah, I, I agree. It makes it look like it's fading or, you know. Is, do, does anyone agree with, uh, who agrees with DRB and doesn't agree with DRB? Walter, do you feel as though I, it's I a think that the uh, <coughs> design that you're holding in your left hand is perfectly acceptable. My right hand. Right hand. Yeah. <laughs> Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, am indifferent, but I would leave it to the abutters and see what they think. All right. How about you? I, I've stated I don't mind the orange stripe. I agree that I'd like to lose the clouds. So I guess I'm half with the DRB. Jeff. Um, you know, I personally don't have a problem with what's proposed, but I also respect the opinion of the DRB. I mean, these folks give their time. They do this. Um, you know, this is something that they're skilled in, and I respect their opinion. I also respect the opinion of the butters, so I, I don't think that we should ignore, you know, their input. Were, were there uh, opinions from our butters? We don't know if they were. Yeah, we got some emails. Oh, did we? Mm-hmm. And Betsy's here. Oh. Oh, okay. Why don't we hear from Betsy? Since you wrote in. Is this working? Elizabeth Whitney, 26 Valley Street, Pondville. Um, I did attend the design review board meeting and I did write comments to you today. Um, I don't love the golf signage, period, the canopy. I've been paying a lot of attention to canopies as I drive from here to Hopkinton, here to Sudbury. I've noticed many canopies, such as at Cumberland Farms, has nothing on it. But I've really paid a lot of attention to dailies, and that's mobile. And to me, that is a very significant point here. I. I don't know if I feel that enough negotiation with golf has taken place. I support the building. I support the project. 
but I really don't like the canopy in Pondville. It just doesn't seem to fit the historical hamlet of Pondville, commercial or not. And when I was at the DRB committee, I heard that a design was presented that had the blue on the inside, the white on the outside, two orange golf signs. I mean, personally, I hate the orange, but that's beyond my control. <coughs> and so then this other picture came in with the cloud, which yeah, did not appeal to me. And the design review board made it clear that this second picture that was submitted did not match the proposed picture that was submitted. And so they took it from there. So I have personal feelings about what I would like Pondville to look like, residential and commercial. And I just would like to see more work done with golf. If mobile can do it, I don't understand uh, why golf wouldn't consider modifying for the sake of having a business go forward on a very heavily traveled route. Route 1A is how I feel. I, I just... Um, I do have opinions about aesthetics. Yeah. So, John, I think that you're probably going to have to go make a more concerted effort to get this sign amended to please the most prominent member of that section of town. That's what I think. <laughs> the plan's called for a sketch. You got no sketch. I got a picture, photo, cell phone. And then you got to make a commitment to see if you're going to please this lady because she's a mainstay of the town, the butters matter. I would go with the neighbor's opinion far more than the DBA myself personally because I don't think they really run on any strict criteria. It's all very subjective, but I think you should be pleasing the neighbors, and I think you should go make an effort. Sure. It's probably going to be cheaper what she wants. What did, um, what did the engineer put together for the effort tonight? I guess this. Right. You know, the yeah. yeah. With Clyde logo, and there's the color scheme. Yeah, I mean, if, if so, if... If the if you know if the abutters in the, in the town don't want the cloud, then you know we can lose the cloud. But we, uh, we can ask. But we really need the, they really need the orange border, the blue, and the golf sign, which I think is already everything's approved except for the orange border and the cloud. I think was my our understanding. And I, I I think that what the DRB said to us also was that dailies never came in front of the board and asked to put mobile canopy stuff. They just went plain. Really? No. I don't think so. Extensive number of hearings for how their about canopy. Six, how about six months? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. Uh, Bob Bob Nicodemus on the design review no, now. No one, the other guy said it. Yeah, because yeah. Bob Nicodemus was on the planning board at the time, and he was a pretty darn good architect. And there was a lot of conversation about that canopy. Oh yeah. So you didn't ask my opinion, but I thought that Daly's really <coughs> really towed the line on what the town was asking and it's 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 a lot more sedate than any other mobile station i've seen right so what do you think of the recommendations from drb versus this i i mean i don't like the orange i don't like the orange stripe and the, every, nobody else is real happy and you've already so i would ask both to remove the orange stripe and the and the uh cloud <coughs> the fluffiness but that's I think you should ask I, it's it, you know we made dailies do it so yeah it, it, it's ultimately <coughs> our decision but we always take very seriously the recommendations of the design review board so if, if, if this board said well I don't care about the orange stripe so much then we'd probably we'd allow an orange stripe I'm not saying that we're allowing an orange stripe what we're saying is to go along and, and, and get them to agree with the recommendations of the DRB. There's already an orange border on the golf, though, that the board's approved. The actual, the actual name, right? right? The circle? But yeah, that's the circle. But the circle is... You're saying the circle or the yeah. stripe, John? Just the circle? Yeah, so it's pretty big. Yeah, I know. But that's not the whole... 
canopy perimeter. Well, so that one has an orange. Thing. Right? Yeah. This one does have an orange on the bottom. This is both orange, white, blue, white. Right. Ours is. Uh, I, I guess. I guess with the, uh, talking to the operator uh, after the DBA meeting, a uh, DRB meeting, um, the cloud wasn't as important as the orange stripe. So, I mean, can we can we meet in the middle and, and just you know maybe eliminate the, the cloud and and give us the orange stripe? So I went to Syracuse, so my blood runs a little bit orange. So Betsy, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I could never get up and say I hate orange. <laughs> no, but I think I graduated from Syracuse bit. too. Did you really? I'm not having that problem. Really? Yeah. I love orange. I love orange. But no, I, I, I do I do think aesthetically that it could fit in well. I mean, put it in the context of Plainville. I, I'm just joking aside. But uh, I, to me, I'm not as offended by the orange stripe. But that's just I'm just one person. It's your important vote, though. I got there so probably earlier than you did. You're saying that your your opinion come now we're going to have to get uh, uh, some verification about what you're saying about the uh, the comments from the DRB that they are more concerned about the orange stripe than they are about the clouds or they're more concerned about the clouds than they are the orange stripe. The clouds. They're more concerned about the clouds. The DRB? Yeah. Yeah, I believe, I believe they are that was the biggest issue with the cloud. I mean, I don't think they're in favor of either, of either but I think they're more against the cloud. Okay. Well, start by asking for both. And work your way down and see what you can get out of it before we... They don't say orange stripe. The DRB is agreeable to the canopy image of blue panels with white trim and an orange golf logo. Right, right. That's not an orange stripe. Right. Well, they don't mention the cloud either. No, that no. They're saying what they're agreeable to. Yes. Doesn't have a cloud but or an orange stripe. Indeed, but in terms of priorities of which they hated worse, it it, we don't know say. because no, right. Yeah. Say. That's what we have to. Betsy, could you find out whether or not <coughs> the uh, DRB has <coughs> any preference as to which they well, dislike re more? They're reporting that they. Right yeah. the clouds. Yeah. They, they hate the cloud more. Come on. Uh, yes. Well, Betsy doesn't like the orange. No, she doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, so they should ask. Yeah, that's true. Yes. No, and it certainly isn't just what Betsy wants. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but um, I am interested, and I've been attending meetings since 2007, so I think I've earned my stripes. <laughs> Speaking of stripes. Um, I think what the DRB meant, it did not mention the word cloud, and I noticed that. I don't even know what the cloud is supposed to mean. But DRB referenced the photograph that came to the meeting that night, and that had the cloud and the orange stripe. I'm less concerned about the orange stripe than I am the cloud. Um, but what I am concerned about now is with whom did you speak at Gulf? You mentioned an operator. Well, who's that? Is that is that the company, the Gulf? Is it oh, a district so manager? It, is it it's somebody? Our, it's our tenant. It's your tenant, but, but that's our, our tenant is is a, a, a gas operator, a, a Gulf gas. Well, he's station. like a franchise. Well, yeah, it, does he represent, I mean, is he the go-to guy if you want something legal looked into? Do you t speak to your operator about that, or do you go directly to the company? I've so so he, is, he is, I guess, the I mean, I'm supposed to be talking to the yeah. board. He, 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 is, he is a Gulf, if you want to call him a franchisee. Uh, so he's allowed, or a licensee, he, he's allowed to run his station as a Gulf gas station. I think to Betsy's point, if he needs your help, in getting to corporate, to getting to the right people to corporate. review this as an issue, if you can help him get to the right people, I don't think the buck stops with him, is the point. So let's get to where the buck stops. And, and that's my comment to the board, that I feel that it's gone as far as the operator. The operator says, uh, why would the operator say, oh, absolutely, let me take on this major change? Right. No. The sooner business gets going, the better. I get that. However, to sacrifice aesthetics, that are going to be there for a long, long time, long after Betsy Whitney of Pawnville is gone. I think it's important to set a precedent, and I feel very strongly about precedents. 
So that's my speech for tonight. So I would like it to go to corporate, which was the word that I was trying to think of, but I was thinking about orange. So I'll meet you halfway, honey. <laughs> I think you've got it, right? <laughs> You have to talk to them about getting a new design for the canopy with the recommendations. You have a copy of this, right? You don't have a copy of the DRB letter? Great. Great. You can let them see that. So you see what they uh, maybe change the type of cloud. And actually, I saw some. I did see the board board cloud <laughs> mentioned someplace. Was there another letter that? Yourself. Betsy, was there another letter where there was a a mention of the word cloud? No, I was, I was looking through the notes. I even had their draft notes. It didn't mention the clouds. For some reason, in my head, I I, I knew exactly cloud. Oh, okay. That was on Betsy's. Betsy's yeah, one of Betsy's letters. Right? Oh, okay, that's why I saw the word cloud before. Okay, that's it. <coughs> But anyway, I'll let them know that the image that they're talking about here is the cloud. Yeah. That they don't like the enhancement around the, 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 the uh, gulf sign. Okay? So, so if they go back to golf and golf says, this is our design, this is what we want, so where does that leave us? With? Then what? You may be denied. Give us a call and come back. We'll be here on December 9th. Okay. Thanks. Sandy Knoll Estates. Let's see now. Sandy Knoll Estates. <coughs> Another request to release blocks one through five. My individual comment, Mr. Chairman, is to make sure they give it a due diligence and they're going to make that sign change. Not just lip service. Yes. And they were really, really good basketball when I was there. Really good. The, um, what, so what is our standing on the, the whole the Sandy Knoll Estates thing? Is, is it, are we still, um, they, they still don't have a, um, any kind of permits, right? There's no earth removal permit. No, the last one was uh, ended. Right. Yet I saw some pictures today that looked as though there was some work being done on the site. Am I correct? No. No. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members. Louis Cacabero for the uh, uh, April stand for uh, petitioners. I'm not sure what their status is with you. I've endeavored to acclimate myself on the file. Uh, I've met with Mr. Goff. We've had a couple of uh, communications concerning where we are. I think what technically is in front of you guys is a request to sign um, a tripartite agreement and to release the lots. But there seem to be some ancillary issues about gravel removal. So I'm not sure where you want to start. Oh, you can't you're going to you. turn your microphone on. Sorry. Oh, oh hold it closer. Steve, okay, if I may so just jump in really yes. quickly. Um, the, the pictures that you, you received were from a neighbor um, who had sent them to me, and I, I, I told him that I would forward, forward those pictures oh. to the planning board. Those pictures were from a year ago. Oh, oh okay. So just to clarify. So once again, I think what's technically on your agenda is a request to sign a bond and to release lots. But if the board has... Uh, an interest in discussing these ancillary issues. We're, here, we're certainly here to try to do that. So I've tried to tackle and get acclimated to those issues in my communications with Mr. Goff, but I'm not sure I fully grasp them. Well, these ancillary issues are not small issues. These ancillary issues are what the main problem is with the, this entire development. I didn't, these use the word ancillary. Ancillary <laughs> I didn't use the, the word ancillary issues. I didn't use the word ancillary in an effort to yeah. demean them. <laughs> so, do you remember the exact way we had left this, Gino, with, uh, hmm. as far as what we're going to do with the, um, the gravel removal on the, if we release these lots? We hadn't decided. I thought, I thought we had. I, thought I think we the had. last, what we wanted, Ray and I went and took a look at the site, and it's certainly not my intention to hold up anything. 
you look at the contour that were probably the original contour before the stockpiles were created from the road development, which probably is the material that was stockpiled there from road construction that's been sitting there, which is the eyesore. My perspective, and I think Ray's was, that permit that was in effect had been on for well before my time, 10, 11 years or so. <laughs> my contention is to, before we start with the lots, let's get rid of the gravel that's been on top of those uh, two lots in the middle for the past uh, 10 years. We've been trying to do that, and you won't let us do it. You want oh. us to get individual permits before we can remove the gravel. That was before my time, but yeah. his, his, you know, my, here's my suggestion. Uh, can come up with, you, you're not going to be able to sell that by truckload retail and have a grapple operation. We all agree with that. That's done. Okay. <laughs> you can look through with a naked eye and see where the existing no was before you started that subdivision. That represents the top pot, the excess gravel from road construction. That should have been taken off over the last permit. That went on forever. So I would just like to see very simply that dirt from the road construction, which causes the eyesore, off the site. So what you're going to have to do is not wait for a truckload to be sold retail. You have to coordinate with the company, give us a schedule to have whether it be Lopes or Trusker or somebody, or you folks find a commercial lot where you can move the stuff so then you can sell it at your own leisure and have a commercial business going. <laughs> Get that off. Now at least the site looks different. Now as you look at your five lots from a naked eye, it looks like probably two to three need gravel lot, but not the other two. Which means you can start building pretty quickly. And the gravel after the road constructors lot, number one, the site's going to look much more enhanced to the neighbors, but it's going to be done in a timely manner with, with, with deadlines to get it out of there. And then we can go over the two lots that need gravel removed from the lots, agree that that amount has to come off, and then work on that second gravel removal stage after as you're constructing the lots. That would be my suggestion. So well, there are some that require fill, though, too, aren't there? No, aren't, no, there's aren't no there fill. two lots that require some fill on them? Yeah, here's the, no? here's the plan. The one off of Miller Street has, has is a long lot, and the fill there initially, but I think you're building the house down further. Yeah, well, that's like a little retention <laughs> block. Yeah, so that, that nothing's going to need, nothing's going to need no, fill. <laughs> So if you could just come up with a timetable to get the excess dirt off from road construction so the lots are back to the original state, to me that would be a great starting point. We can't make you take the gravel off, but we can stop you from removing it. And we've already had 10 years to remove this gravel with the existing permit. It's never been done. <laughs> I would suggest you try to come up with a mechanism, and you should be able to get that thing off for the month with, with the proper trucks and timetable, and that's all I'm looking to see. And then you come with five lots, you could probably have three of them working without earth removal permits that don't need it, and the other two we deal with in the center. But in the meantime, the place looks nice, but uh, I think you're going to have to have a timetable on when the dirt's going out of there and have it stabilized in the middle. <laughs> My suggestion to you, not to add a piece to the puzzle, but when I suggested you go back to conservation, you thought you were done, and uh, my comment very briefly is you're far from done. Your orders expired in 07. <laughs> Work has never been changed. The, 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 lot, the, the plan that you filed with the notice of intent has changed. It changed three, four years later. So with your, with, your, with your orders of condition being expired, there was a bond in the amount of 86380 that was supposed to be posted that was never done. You're back to square one with conservation. So now we look at the road, you've got soot and sediment filled more than halfway up your outlet pipes. They changed. There was two going up Miller Street. Now you have two down at the junction of Miller's going up, whatever the name of that street is, your subdivision street. <laughs> Those two discharge pipes will move to the corner of Miller and your new subdivision road. We don't have that on our orders of condition with your filing. And it's secondary anyway because your orders expired seven, eight years ago. The bond was never placed, and right now our concern is you got to get that place stabilized. You got the sand flowing over the sidewalk, over the grass strip, which is not a grass strip, which is more sand and you've flooded, and now you take the chance of altering a wetland. You alter the wetland, 
everything becomes a much greater problem. So I suggest you look at that, you clean it up, you stabilize it, you call our agent, as suggested two months ago, get the status. I have all the dates here and what was done, but you basically have no, no notice of intent, no active orders with our commission, and you're discharging drainage into a wetland area. There's no discharge. Where's the Discharge there are two outlet pipes filled with soot at the corner of your subdivision road and, and Miller Street. We have a field review. We have pictures. Again, I suggest you go to the office. This was abandoned after you filed, and you filed two extensions in 04 and 05. They expired. You're not under the State Extension Permit Act. You never posted the bond. No work was ever checked. And the plan that you filed your notice of intent with has changed. Your discharge areas have changed. So you got to look into that and get that straightened out. Mr. Chairman, may I inquire, yeah. Mr. Welton? Thank yeah. you. Would uh, th there are two lots that you, from your uh, perspective, need immediate attention? Would that solve the runoff problem that you're referencing? The roadway with the five lots all has to be stabilized. All the five lots need stabilization. Yeah, the whole roadway, the soft shoulder, the grass strip, which is just dirt, is all running into the street. It's pouring down the street. It's covered with dirt. And uh, it's filled up the pipe. And we have pictures again in the office that are actually I have a picture here. Half of your RFP pipe is filled with dirt. So you're discharging that into the wetland. Normally, if we had a scientist go out, you may have altered it. So again, I suggest you get this done, get it addressed, because this is going to hold you up more than these uh, lot releases here. So what you, what you filed initially, unfortunately, for some reason, was abandoned. If I might, Mr. Chairman, all due respect, we've been in here over the past year. We were informed when we came in, we had filed a permit, if you'll recall, to, for a gravel removal for an extension of the existing permit. We were then told by the people uh, that you have here as consultants that the only way that we could get a gravel removal permit was to pull a building permit. The only way we can get a building permit is to file for a road bond. We paid for a road bond. We had you accepted it. Uh, we're ready to proceed in accordance with the procedure that I thought we had laid out over the past year. Uh, and we're still in that uh, same mode. Uh, but we do need, in order to get the lots released or you know uh, financed from the, by the bank. I will point out the bylaw that was passed two years ago to, uh, to Lou. I actually wrote the bylaw. It allows for, for lots that do not have building permits, it allows tree removal, excavation, earth removal, and any of the permits needed to get the lot in shape to be developed. So right now, as of two years ago, and I'll show you the bylaw, you do not need a building permit to get that lot set to be built. Well, we, we had your, the building per, the building department, I think Mr. Carlucci and Mr. Houston, all three of them came up with the same conclusion, that without a building permit, we were not eligible for a gravel removal permit. That gravel removal permit application was tabled, I think, six, eight, mo nine months ago. Well, what's the gravel removal <coughs> permit you had 10 years ago? You had one then. That, that was uh, for road construction, and the removal permit was uh, uh, eliminated by this board last December 7th, if I recall correctly. Then we came in, and I was told by the board that we could continue doing what we were doing up there as long as we come in with a gravel removal application and we, di and we did submit it. And I'm uh, sure your records will show that we were here with that application, but because of the fact that we didn't have building permits, we, would, we wouldn't be, weren't allowed to have a gravel removal permit. Now, I, I grant that I'm not totally uh, privy to all the bylaws, and maybe I should be, but uh, no one when is. the- th Can I ask you a question? Sure, sir. Are you folks able to take that excess material from road construction and just get it out of there quickly? No, get it out of there get quickly. Out. Yeah, we, we, we would. We already had an agreement with the board before, and they shut us down. We were supposed to well, get the lots ready to build on. Well, we're moving forward. So Steve would remember. <laughs> well, to my thought, we're moving. 
we're moving yeah, well, forward. We, we we're were moving also, forward. We were also asking you for a time frame, and, and we, we never gave seemed to get it. You guys gave us a time frame to the end of the year of last year, can, and then you shut us down. What you need to do, what you need to do, Mike, is you have to get a, a company so that's going to be contracted to do it, yep. a schedule of how many tractors they're going to have on the road and where it's going, and we can do the calculations to get the amount of material off to bring you probably have a topo with the original mm -hmm. grades before you started. Bring it back to its natural state. Then, to me, you'd be in great shape. Aside from the conservation issues that were were self-created, uh, I have no intent on stopping you and holding up. I, my intent is to please the neighbors going on with this and make the site look good. I think the file should contain, and once again, I've only had a chance to peruse it quickly. I think the file contains an engineering analysis of the number of yards of fill that need to be removed to address the concerns Mr. Weddleton's raising? It doesn't show just the, the, the uh, it shows the, the gravel including all the lots. Oh. So what has to be removed just to make the site back <clears throat> to original state before the road was started is substantially less. And that's why it'll take a substantially less amount of time. So I think once that's done, the gravel remaining from the two lots that are of the biggest consequence would be uh, uh, another issue, but you'd still have three other lots that you can deal with at that time. And you can't build on the two lots that I'm talking about because that's where you still have a, a high grade. So okay. I, I'm very concerned about the interplay between the, reg the way the regulation applies here. Does the regulation apply, as Mr. Ronka suggested, might, that we can't get a building permit and we can't get an earth removal permit without well, remember that that's, the, no the other, that's not true the, the, the zoning did change that's why now do you remember when did the zoning change 2012. as far as that it changed 2012 yeah. it's in the residential right. section only for residential not commercial now when you gave the opinion originally was that back when it was still the old zoning i don't remember when that was we're part of our you sat in our committee for that yes. section when we wrote that so actually you you don't need a building permit to take actually once you get the dirt off from the road construction you do not need a building permit to clear out the two lots in the middle to get those down to buildable status just got to be done quickly by a team that does it it has to go to some have some destination well you so would have taken your sweet time getting well, that yeah. that the off Steve too, though, if, we, if we put a bunch of trucks in there everybody in the neighborhood's complaining not if it's you done quick nice not, a, not if it's done on schedule all right we had the same okay. thing going on for a month in okay. my site and we had 12 tractor the trailers the all day and he may need a police detail if, if the if the volume warrants it but still it's all just got to get out of there once it yeah. starts it can't no stop nice and easy and pleasing it we have no complaints no nice one. and easy no mr chairman if if the applicant right. were to submit a letter directly or through me that outlined a timetable and contractors and so forth is that something this board would entertain and vote on to accept and would part of that vote include an agreement to accept the tripartite agreement endorse it and release the lots if we comply with the timetable as proposed no oh, I, I personally don't think that I see any problem with that does anyone else on the board have any other uh, insight into this except that there's going to be a new permit have to be filed because right. the other one's expired I understand but that. it, that'll be part of the, the that, procedure that we would propose that's what I'm looking for that's what I'm looking for an application for a permit to remove the fill associated with road construction you got it a timetable to do that work contractors that we intend to engage yep. whether it be themselves or yep. or third parties and you combine that with stabilizing all of the dirt area so it's not running down the street and dressing the place up. Uh, like I said, from my look, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, it looks like you've got three lots that are all set to go. And, and my own vote would be when it comes to that is not to hold you up in the three lots that you're set to go. Start to make some money as you apply for a second earth removal permit for the two lots in the middle. And the stabilization is likely some hay, hay bales. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's really it's, probably what we're talking it, about. It's right? hay bales, and in the spring, a lot of that should be seeded. Just to this, the sand is so great there. The material is so outstanding. It runs over the sidewalk, over the curb, and right down the street. And it's coming from probably 20 feet back uh, from the uh, the sidewalk all the way down and just off. So, that's something you know, that that should have been done a long time ago. Jeff, do you have any comment? 
Are we in a position to well, my, time to my concern, and um, perhaps this can be this done in a way that ensures the that the uh, timetables are met, we but seem to you know, we've been down this road, and meeting. it was about a year ago. There were probably four members of the board. I know Michelle was there. Uh, Walter, I think you were there. We met. We met at the property, and we met uh, with one of these gentlemen. And I think where we ended up is the past is the past. Let's get a game plan going forward. Let's come up with some dates, and let's. Um, and we, we asked these folks to appear before us with a plan. Um, we. That's right. They didn't show up. And That's they right. didn't show up. And we never get and, a plan and, and it's presented to us either. And I, I don't I want understand this something. to happen again. Hey, guys. Okay. Yep. Thank yeah. you. We pay attention here. You understand, <laughs> Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want to, what do you figure the, the, the gravel from the road construction is? Seven or 8,000 yards? Oh. Here's, here's seven, seven or eight seven thousand yet. Yeah. <laughs> <I'd say laughs> if they have ten tractor yards, trailers going and they make four runs a day, <coughs> they can get a thousand yards off of that site in a week. So basically, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, in a week. So basically, in a month's time or so, you should be able to get all of that off the site. So and I that's only assuming four four trips a day. If it's a shorter distance, you may be able to get five trips a day or or, or, or more. So that should be able to be all be removed in a month's time. So the question I have is why do lot, why does lot release have to enter into this? I guess it doesn't. I mean, well, to me, I'd like to see all the all the I mean, road and gravel and off from the road before we start the lots. I think and that's, I, I, yeah. that's yeah, my memory yeah, right. is mm -hmm. all accurate. What you said, and we had such a hard time. And you guys weren't paying attention when Jeff reminded us as to everything that happened. If you want to repeat it so that they can hear what the problem I, was I, originally. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, so, you know, about a year or so ago, there were, I believe, four members of the planning board that met with one of these gentlemen at the property. And, you know, there had been a number of issues that were raised. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, there are issues with um, at least one abutter, perhaps more. I'm sure there's other people in the area that aren't pleased that, you know, the project has taken as long as it has, um, particularly where something is, is started but hasn't been finished. It's one thing not to start something, but it's another where there's something that's in process for such a long period of time. And we could debate, you know, what that is that's in process, but it certainly doesn't look like development in terms of, it hasn't at least up until this point in time in terms of construction and anyone with any intentions to build, you know, homes. So, you know, we met at the property and really where we ended up is let's not look back, let's look forward, let's come up with a game plan with timetables um, for material, the earthen material to be dealt with and for the projects to move forward. And we asked these gentlemen to come up with that plan and appear before the board and they didn't show up. Now, they've been back since that time and there have been other actions the board has taken, other conversations, but I bring this up only because my level of confidence in terms of this thing being addressed once and for all is very small right now. I have very little confidence that this problem is going to be addressed. And, you know, I personally would prefer to postpone discussions regarding lot release until the activities which Mr. Weddleton has outlined take place. And it sounds like they can take place pretty quickly. The problem, that it, as I recall it, from the last timetables, there was no exact date timetable. There was nobody identified in how many trucks and where they were going to actually take this out. There were no calculations done. It was more open-ended. We need something definitive. So at the exception of a rain day, this much gravel is getting out of there each day. And if you need a police detail down at the corner of, of Miller Street or whatever, then you need a police detail. And and you, my memory is all that as well. And then I, right. the reason why I believe that the earth removal permit was a cease and desist is was because the calculations, the timetable, the commitment were never presented as per our request. And we, were, we weren't willing to entertain any, any further work until there was a commitment. And similar to, you know, the building permit issue, I believe our thought was, well, if we could get a building permit in the site, then that might mean that some development and some work is going to happen. And so I think we were trying to use tools and vehicles that we had to get some traction going, um, 
towards specifics and details that we hadn't been receiving. That that's I mean I, I think we have some, we should have all this recorded in our meeting minutes. From Steve, past, I'd like to add oh, to that okay. too. Uh, <clears throat> my when we walked away from that meeting, I think it was <coughs> September October last year. Uh, the gravel issue was going to be resolved by the end of the year and in the spring of 2014 a building was going to start and by the end of this year all houses would be up none of that happened none of it happened we no none of that's not true that is what you said sir no you guys shut us down a month and a half because you the refused to show up at our meeting With the we requested you we twice requested. to be here yeah. You, you didn't show up? We were back this spring. Well, in the spring, but that's we, not what happened last we December. Were back in the spring, <coughs> it was decided that I needed building permits. That's right. I was chasing my tail. I was told this by the, and that's where our original. Uh, yeah, well, we were pretty lean with you back then before I, I, we had the cease I, and desist. I don't get the problem. We thought we were following your instructions. What well, we did you didn't show up when we requested you to come in twice. Uh, we said, "Oh, weren't they supposed to be here tonight?" Have oh. Record of that because we've we, been uh, to many meetings with you, Mr. Chairman, since that particular date, and this is the first time we've ever mentioned it. You know, uh, here's a bait. I re you said get a, a, a prepare a bond. I paid for the bond to be prepared. The bond was accepted. We thought that we once we got the bond with the road release that we could get a building permit, then we could get a gravel removal permit. So this is what this board led us to believe we, the last time we were in. I we regress when we start talking history. I mean, I'd like to move forward. I have, uh, and I tell you, I have, I have no problem designing something that this stuff isn't out of there in one month. Even if it's having you post a, a forfeitable bond of $20,000, that it's not out in this day, we keep it. I mean, there's a bunch of things we can do contractually to make sure that stuff is off that's never been done in the past. But basically, we want to come up with some agreement to get the road stuff off of there in the <coughs> next month so the site goes back to the original state and get it stabilized. Can we come up with an agreement that, that is foolproof that everybody agrees with? That's uh, the sequencing, then may I propose the following? And if you like it, you can adopt it as, as a vote. Did we present to you a timetable? Identifying yardage that's to be removed. Um, destination. Destination. And by whom? And by whom? Mm -hmm. um, within a parameter of certain dates. We're getting into the time of year where weather could be a contingency. You would have an extra date allowed for every 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 date that the weather prohibits. But other and, than and that, it should be going five days a week. Perhaps we identify um, a notice provision that you know, we will give you notice that we intend to start in seven days or ten days or something along those lines. Uh, we'll proceed with diligence to complete that. At which time, you're going to need to give us a permit to do this. You're going to need to accept this and give right. a permit, permit for us yep. to do this. I, I want you folks to go out and shoot an elevation that the gravel from the road construction, you would know because we don't have any original topography, to show what elevation you're taking down that pile in the center to. So we, we have a, a we have a benchmark on where this, this is coming down to. So you shoot an elevation, we can double check it, and that's what's got to come down in this timetable with this many trucks over this many days, et cetera, et cetera. We complete that work, right. yeah. you verify it through a field survey, then will you accept our bond, release our lots, and allow us to go pull building permits to I would only, houses. I would only add one more thing to this contract. There should be a, some type of a penalty clause in there that's substantial. I know you make faces, but this is 11 years. Of, so if you're going to do what you're supposed to in a fair amount of time, it should be fine. But something that, that acts as a consequence for noncompliance. After this many years, something has to be in there to act as a, as a consequence for you folks. And again, the timetable will be agreed upon by both, including rain days, et cetera, et cetera. But there has to be a consequence if you don't comply. Then it's going to hold through the contract. Does if you get no con no uh, no uh, uh, potential loss for inaction again, it may happen again. It's less likely to happen if it's costly. So to my way of thinking, of the board, if we get an agreement, I would like some financial consequences put in there if the timetable isn't complied with. And then I think you're, it works you already have covenants from us. You already have planning board covenants from us. 
I guess the only thing I would add is that the intent is that you know there's no screening activities. It's really take the material, put it on a truck, and ship it out. Yeah. You know, it's it's not to step well, they up. They know that. I think, I, I think so, but I, I you know, that's all done. Well, that's passed. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. Okay. So that's the way it stands now. So you're going to submit that to us. I'm going to have to consult with them, try to craft it. Okay. And then come in here and try to get this table to approve it. Okay. If they give me the authority to do so, I'll be back with it. All right. So the key objectives are reasonable and diligent. Our next meeting is on December 9th. Sounds like a going to be a full night. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes, I, I think we've got an abutter here that yes, may want uh, to have something to say. My name's uh, Paul. Yeah, if if the, if you do have a cease and desist, why were you in there on? I wasn't. In, I'm in Franklin. He wasn't. I'm in Franklin. The cops come down twice, and they said we were in Franklin. He's calling when we're working in Franklin. How do we scrape the street down with John wants to do and stuff like that? If you don't hear a backup alarm or something, that's why the dirt's on the street. He calls the cops every time we drive in the North Park. Hey, Paul, can I ask you? It went down six oh, times the other day. Six times. Paul, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. You heard a discussion about a timetable yeah. within mm -hmm. three, four weeks to get it done with consequences they don't do it, and they're not doing any more screening or moving or that. Does that work for you if we get a contract that we agree is enforceable and get this done? Well, go back a, a year ago. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. Veterans Day. No, I don't want to go thing. back. Here does, we are is, a year. is this contract yeah. that we're talking about? I just want them out of my back. Okay, my so does it, this seem to work yeah, for you, noise. what we're talking about? Yes, it does. Okay, yes. that's all I wanted. So, again, if there's consequences, if they don't comply, that makes people act differently. So, let's see if this works. Because, in my experience, nothing has ever been defined. I mean, they were going to build a lot, an old mill. You want to take the dirt over there when you got there? That was all nonsense. That's just nonsense. That's just a delay with the, nothing so personal. We took, we took it all <laughs> yeah, over there. We took that's not the way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's not the way to get rid of gravel. The way to get rid of it is just what we talked about in the contract. Mike knows Mike's a gravel person. So I think this, if we agree with the contract, with consequences, I think it's going to work. I hope. Not to say sure, but, but you're on board with that because you're the one that's been taking the time to show up and well, putting more, your time I'm in. I'm here because I, I take time off from my job I so, so I can enjoy my own property. Just listen, that's their property. I respect that. That's their property. That's my property. I can't even be in my own yard I without this. I listened to it when I wasn't on the board. I listened. But this works so far for you to see if this, this can happen? Um, sound reasonable? It, it does sound okay, reasonable. Okay, let's see if yes, it sir. would work then, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Okay, so you're going to get something to the board then, right? All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, Bristol Pond Estates. Oh. Which one? What was? Oh, Bristol Pond Estates. That's the one we asked for them to clean up a, a little bit, right? It's more, yes. It's on Marshall. Marshall. Yes. He talked to Ray. Oh. A director of planning. Sure. Promotion. You spoke to them then, right? I, I spoke to, yeah, the uh, owner, Mike uh, Rosano. Rosano, thank you. <laughs> and I believe that's his parents here? Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. It was. Uh, but, yeah, Mike did clean up the, the uh, material that was stored that's on the cul-de-sac. Uh, he had a landscaper go in and do some, some work on the, the overgrowth that had occurred there. And... Uh, He's been, I, I, from what I, I learned, was that he's been making improvements to the subdivision as he sells lots. So he's making, you know, installing the curbs as the lots are completed uh, so that they don't get destroyed in the construction process. Mm -hmm. And that, so, so everything that we asked for was done, the cleaning it mm -hmm. all, yes. cleaning up all the sites. Yeah, there wasn't much to clean up, but the, it, he, he did take care of that. All right, so there's a... <clears throat> They want us to just release mm -hmm. lots 10 and 13, right? Mm -hmm. right? That's yep. it? Yep. Anyone have any objection to uh, releasing lots 10 and 13? Nope. Someone want to make a motion? Motion to release lots 10 and 13, first of all, states off of Marshall Street. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>
We have problems with a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming. Now, Toils and Farm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. What's the status? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mark Mastriani from Pulte Homes. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I know I'm on the agenda for uh, the lot releases still, but I just came tonight to tell you that we're not ready for lot releases, so I'm not here to push them on you. Uh, I was before the Conservation Commission with uh, Mr. Loyalton last night, so I know I still have uh, stormwater and erosion control issues that I'm working on. We've engaged an engineer, we've engaged a wetland scientist, and um, we have some deadlines that uh, the Conservation Commission gave us to produce some documents and produce some um, information. Mm -hmm. So we're, uh, we're working on that. So I would like to continue the lot release um, discussion for your next meeting. And at that time, I would expect to come in with my engineer and um, anybody else to present right, you know. um, the information or the resolution or what I know about the issues that have been brought to my attention. Especially that drainage basin that has, has sort of vanished and... Yeah, I, so, you know, we're, we'll have information on that and, you know, um, I'd like to have that discussion with your consultants and your board, with my engineer, so I don't even want to get into a, an argument over what is and what isn't. I'd like to just understand the situation first and then have a, uh, um, an informed discussion so that we can move forward. Well, if you have to get in touch with um, our uh, engineers, then uh, you can contact them. But you guys have to make sure that you, you keep yeah, notes we, on that. We have, yeah. yeah, they've been very helpful. We fully um, intend to keep them um, very up to speed. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, they provided a, um, a memo on erosion control improvements that we could do out of the project at the last meeting we had talked about and we've done a lot of them and we're and my engineer talked to your office today and coordinated <coughs> how we could um, finish um, the other areas that we hadn't done yet so that is in process and will be done um, now so we're, we're, we're working on that we, Mr. Weddleton and I had a discussion about that last night as well so um, you did very well under circumstances yeah, I mean, I'm, we're not used to being, my company, myself, yeah. we're not used to being any kind of trouble. We have a very good reputation, and I've been before your board for years, and we've solved any issues we've had. I took down the signs. So <laughs> at least get a little <laughs> smile out of everybody. But I know. drove by there this morning to verify <laughs> to that, so that I did. I know I you drive by. I just to drive by a few nights ago so. myself. <laughs> you, you know, so... Um, you, we hear your concerns, uh, and I have, um, I have engineers and I have other professionals working on them, uh, and it takes a little bit of time to do it right, so that's where I'm at today. Yeah, good. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. Question for you, John, because I know you've been through this um, quite a bit here in the last few weeks. So, um, so you've got the catch basins at the base of, of Warren. And you've got some steel plate. There's, There's two no catch steel plates. Oh, yeah, okay. Right, you've got a couple steel plates there. Then you've got, sure, sure. you know, it seems to be in alignment with the culvert that leads over to the wetland. So, so that concrete pipe, mm -hmm. um, does that tie into the, where those steel plates? I'm not sure what's on the I don't know what the steel, steel plates are. That mm -hmm. must be a new thing. Did you have steel plates over the storm sept or something, Mark? They had, I think they were buried but in order to clean it out. Yep. They had okay. to cut around it, and then they put plates, but yeah. those are certainly temporary. Yeah. I'm surprised the plates are still there today, but I know we, we need to, um, we had to cut out a lot of the um, yeah. manholes, we'll, too. Yeah, just as a nutshell, when, we, when he had the, we had the DPW do a review, we found all of the catch basins that were totally filled with sediment and silt. There's one storm scepter at the end of Maple Street that was filled, and two or three of the manholes were paved over. So basically, the water was running unencumbered into the wetlands. So they did a super job in the next three days of vacuuming out the catch basin, sweeping the road, stabil stabilizing all of those lots, probably eight of them, 
going down Warren Street. So now it appears that the water is much cleaner that is discharging. The issue I, I had told Mark we're dying to see the drainage report is because it's the, uh, uh, the volume and the velocity of the water really is, is going into uh, the wetland area and we had checked the uh, endorsed plans and the endorsed plans did not have a waiver going for discharge off the site nor did conser conservation acquiesce to allow them to do that so basically we know that the volume is discharging onto the conservation wetland area and it's not supposed to so we have to see whether the basin was a uh, uh, help to hold all that water or just what so we're not sure I'm not sure uh, the level of infrastructure that may have to be redone but uh, the drainage study is is the next step so once that's done we'll be able to tell a lot yeah so okay. so the delay in the drainage study is I'm having trouble getting it from the prior engineer who does did not work for me he's not my client I was not his client so um, unfortunately the prior developer and the prior engineer has not produced that information. So I have, um, I have a version of the drainage study, a, right. a mm -hmm. very later version of it, but I don't have the final version of it when the, when the basin was removed. So I have an engineer who's going through all the information. He's, he's, uh, we, we know what we built. We know what's there. We know we have the analysis so now he's going he's producing a stormwater report yeah, yeah. that says this is what it is this is what's there this is what it looks like and and then we'll have a discussion and on um, if you don't like what's there then maybe we can you know mitigate it fix it it's not a matter of liking what's there it's a matter is does the new drainage study work so it complies with the zoning and, and the uh, the regulations that's what it's about and if it does Fine. So it's basically an as-built with the caveat that you still right have now. the capability to put in a drainage a basin. If well, in actually, fact it's that's a, what it, you know. Well, it's not an as-built. It's a whole redesign of stormwater for Warren uh, Warren Drive. But they're going to start with an as-built and see from there how no. much they need to change what no. needs to be. First, they have to come up with the drainage study, and then they'll compare that to what's in the road once the drainage study is approved, and it'll see if what it has to be modified, if anything. It's yeah, well, we're saying the same thing. It's possible, John, that, that he's not going to get the past drainage study. It's possible he's going to have to create one based on current conditions. Right. Well, we and the catchment air, and it's not just it's not just how well is it working, it's how large an area are oh, they? Um, we're, we're very well. It's the full what we need to, it, to You have to engineer it. <laughs> right. And it's, well, if it binds, it, it's been engineered. So we. What, what I, I told the mayor. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a question. Andrea, well, we had, I, the, I'm, we're aware we had the meeting with the Pulte folks and Tom Houston attended and Ray. What was explained to them is that doing the study now under current conditions uh, is different than what was done before, yes. although they still wanted that drainage study. Right now, we have the, uh, the installation of all of the driveways with a steep right. pitch running into the waterway. We have front yards with a steep pitch that actually act as half as pervious as a driveway with the runoff, the sheets of runoff. So all of this now has to be taken into account since we have actual conditions with the new study. They, uh, Tom Rosati, their engineer, still wanted the old study as, as a guide to go by, but when uh, we were speaking at that meeting, we all were informing him of the other details that are going to have to be taken in to this new study that wasn't done in the old study because it wasn't built out. I understand. So we'll have we'll have a, you know a presentation or we'll have a lot more information in a couple of weeks, and we can have a, an informed discussion on what what the situation is and what we can do. Because of the uh, level of engineering. Um, Detail. Could you have that conversation with PSC before we you we would love here? to. <laughs> yeah, Actually, no. this no this this report is uh, this report is supposed to go right to PVC uh, right to PSC for total review, just like a new submittal. <laughs> this is supposed to be a uh, a, a consulting price arranged to pay Mr. Houston for the review. And I personally have talked with Mr. Houston on. Uh, the general overlook and the parameters used to review a drainage study where this thing is a lot more consequential, some other things he's going to be looking into. So when this study's done, 
it goes to uh, PSC. They do a full mm -hmm. review, just like it was a new drainage study, and then you'll come before our board, and the comments will be there, and then we'll discuss it. That sounds like that sounds great. Super. December 9th is only three weeks away. Right. I, I understand. Well, we, we're also going before the commission on December 10th. So, I mean, if I come, so on December 9th, I'll, I'll have something. I'll, I'll be here. I mean, we're, we're out in front of this. We're before you. And, um, and, you know, we're working to get it done. So whether I come and have some excuse or I tell you what we've done or I, what we haven't done, you know, we'll be here. The commission or I'll send a letter. I mean, we'll be talking to you well in advance of the The meeting. commission did vote last <laughs> night to withhold all new building permits until uh, our next meeting, until the drainage report is produced and agreed upon. And then it'll be a matter of what has to be done and what not before we move forward again. So hopefully we get the drainage study pretty quickly, right? Okay. Here we go. Okay. So we all set. So, I mean... We'll fit you into the schedule. It doesn't have to be voted on for a time. Because Don't come early. Do you live nearby? Fairly. Good. You have a full agenda. Already. My other meeting tonight was in Oxford, Connecticut, so this is great. <laughs> <laughs> to I was coming here no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> so Betsy will know you what time, what, what time you set into the, yeah. uh, the agenda. Is that, is that over an hour? Uh, it's two and a half hours. For me, yes. And there should be no orange stripes on the drainage report. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or clouds. Well, well actually, there will be clouds. clouds. <laughs> but in seriousness, I, I hope, um, you know, I hope we'll, we'll yeah. produce the information and we can work together to, you know, fix your issues. Thank you, Mark. All right. Yeah. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Okay, what do we have here for Colonial Fence? Do we have a mylar we have to sign? It's going to be a hard fix. I know. Huge basin. Oh my God. I suggested that they do not sell that oh, lot no, no, where the no, basin no. was because no. my guess is they're going to have to use it again. put new piping in, a new basin. And stormwater rules require a, uh, a storm septum before the basin to clean out 80% or so of the discharge before it goes in. Us, right now they're directly said, well, discharging it into there. Here, here, and right. I think the storm scepter in place yeah, now yeah, is undersized. I think it was sized <laughs> only to 700 <laughs> feet. <laughs> After no way, yeah. No, no, no it was all kind of put it in kind of I think that is all yeah, going to have to be. It was the best job. It was never cold anyway. Put in. Yes. It looked like it was added on. Okay, did we did, did we already um did you guys did we already vote on this? Did you guys see this? Yes. We did. We just signed this meeting. Okay. Right, Dave? Did you did you did you flip through the pages? All right, so that the recommendations for town meeting. Look at the pages. Please. Articles. Just try to try to Shrug. see if try to we read have to do it. those tonight. Try to read it sequentially. Oh, no. Don't we? Yeah, yeah, keep going. Next, time oh, no. Tuesday. <laughs> next week. Next week. Yeah, we have to have them for next week. We have to have our recommendations. A good idea. Yeah, I think we have to. <laughs> we pay for this. Okay. Do we? Um, I don't know. I think. Oh, do we happen to have them student, in front of us? Student so we can project make our recommendations. <coughs> hey Betsy, do we have copies of those zoning articles? Because uh, I am. Um, I brought. I brought the ones. I emailed it out to you guys last week. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't have color, the color. But I took notes with an orange. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to get into the discussion on the type of clouds. Maybe change it to a wispy white rather than a cumulus. <laughs> See if that would work. Yeah. Storm cloud. Storm cloud. Yeah. He right. wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't feeling it. Lightning coming down or something. Um, I brought the I brought the warrant article and I brought what we talked about. Well, let's do do it this way because Ray made the, the, the corrections. It, it looks like the corrections are in here. Yeah. So, Ray, why don't, why don't you be the person that presents each of them? Oh and we'll boy. decide on the on the language. If, that if I can remember them all. Oh, here I put him on. I I, I got him red line. Do you? Oh. Well, this is, this is, you know, the I got, I got the warrant. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got that one. All right. Under, they changed. Fall meeting. Okay. Ooh, we're, we're starting the whole uh, warrant articles. Sorry. Thank you for taking control of the room again, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, Article 14. Kind of funny, we had uh, suggested kind of to change from residential uses oh, geez, to transportation and utility uses. So instead of a <coughs> D2C, it would be a D2B. Uh, and then the numbering would change to roof mounted solar would be six. Uh, ground mounted solar would be seven and wind energy would be eight. Those the numbers consecutively change on those. And, and that's all in one article, correct? That's one article, that's article 14. Okay, should we have a vote on what, well not a vote on what, we have, but what we should we say? We, we're going to vote to support the article and recommend a... Um, Good thing the pages are numbered. Recommend approval. Correct? Is that is that what we're going to recommend on this? Yes, as modified. As modified, right? Well, it's, it's been changed in the warrant already. Right. So that's what we're that's what we're discussing is what's in the warrant. Interestingly enough, uh, the find, warrant arrived can't in the find mail. Where it began. And when I open it up, the it printing out. is all screwed up. Oh no! Yeah, completely. Betsy saying, "Thank God it wasn't me." Thank God. Oh my yeah, gosh! Oh, the photocopying got all messed up. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's more than somebody fed it into the machine and told it the wrong way to, yep. to flip it. One page one way, one another. The numbers yeah. are all screwed up. It, it does it that. Is. So it does that. We usually have standard. You do it wrong. You usually if you tell do the standard wrong. language on these, right? The, <coughs> so we, I don't know. We vote to approve that goes an to article. That. Uh -huh. it, 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 Ray, are you going to be doing that, or, or is Gino? Are you going to do the write it up for, for recommendations? I think it's mostly. The language is mostly there already. Isn't it? No, no, no. We have to have written. We have to have written recommendations. You did. Today? I didn't see it. Oh, you, oh, okay. So I, mean, I emailed him the template that we used the last time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can take so a there is a template for, yeah. for, for the way we do it. But if I have not, any trouble, we have to vote for Article 14. Call for help. Do are we voting <laughs> to? We're voting to approve Article 14 yeah. um, for solar panels. Correct. It's just solar panels. This right? is the solar panel. Yeah. yeah. So I'll make that. And motion. wind. And wind. We have a second. 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 All those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Which Which one's the next one? Article 15. And starts here. And what we did was we. I got seven. <laughs> See if it'll amend. We're gonna have to do it. We're this is the kennel one. No, it's not. It's another. Oh, it's the power plant. Yeah, yeah because kettle. it's the power plant that goes with the. No, that's generating. Oh, yeah. Generating. Yeah, I think okay. we're fine there. I think yeah. we're moving on to Article 18. Okay. Again, this is a table. What happened? What happened to 15? Is 15 is fine. Oh yeah, but we have to. We have to make a recommendation. We should do it to all of them then. <coughs> we are going to do that. We're doing it to all of I'm them. I'm just taking all the changed ones. No, 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 no. We have to make a recommendation for all of them. Again, I thought that you would start it at the beginning of. Uh, oh no. The, uh, the zoning article. All right. Let, let's let's begin in the, the right spot. Sorry. I think we're in 15. Uh, article 12. Okay. Just the zone. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Just done in house. Mm -hmm. Article 11. This is the dog licenses. I'm just trying to go backwards here. Sorry. No. What school did you graduate? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Zoom is Article 10. College of Forestry. I believe we're doing Article 11. But I have a degree from Syracuse as well. Okay. That's the next one. Article Which is? This major. is uh, no. This is the dog licenses. I'm sorry. No, no. Article 12. Didn't? I know that was still. Okay. So. Which one's Article 12? That. Article 12 is dealing with, um, this is yeah. that housekeeping issue where we had made a deletion in the last town See, meeting and we had to move sections back up. So that oh, was, just changing the numbers. That's yeah, there wasn't a blank section. Renumbering the paragraphs. Correct. Right. Oh, okay. That's another way to say it. Thank you. Yes. So we recommend approval of this? Okay. Yes. yes. So I'll make a motion to uh, <coughs> have the planning board uh, recommend approval of Article 12. Is it 12? Yes. Article 12. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 13. And this is more of the housekeeping. Um, spe this is special permits by the planning board. 
and it basically just adds the words by the planning board. Oh, I remember this yeah. one. Yeah. And this is another housekeeping right. issue. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll make a recommend. Uh, should we recommend approval of this one? We do. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve Article 13. Second. Second? Yeah, Jeff. Jeff did. Oh, okay. Tom. Or Tom. Oh. <laughs> All those in favor. Hi. 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 Okay. You really confuse people. <laughs> <laughs> really. Article 14, you already did. Okay. So Showing we'll true move on to Article 15. Selectment. And this is power generating uh, plant or more than 1,500 kilowatts of electricity. So we're deleting that section. Right. Um, it's basically redundant. So I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, uh, approve, for the planning board to approve Article 15. Second. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Article 16 is the date, changing it from 1968 oh, okay. to 1953. Okay, the, I'll make a motion for the planning board to approve Article 16. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 17 is kennels. dealing with kennels. And this is the definitions of kennels, uh, commercial boarding and training, uh, commercial breeders, enclosures, uh, personal kennels. So it's all the definitions for oh. kennels. Yeah. Uh -oh. Wasn't there? There's a use table yeah. in another yeah. article. Wasn't there a, a uh, another <coughs> couple that had to do with solar panels and things like that, other than the, the ones that we just yes. discussed. Are, are they later, or did we miss them? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Special Some permit for uh, yeah, that's right for ground ground mounted ground solar panels. That was yeah. Article 14. That it was 14. We already, that was, did, we already oh, oh yeah. okay. I, I don't remember that that part to refresh my memory. <laughs> remember we said. Remember he said it, we were moving them into transportation and utility uses. Yeah, right. Those were the. That's oh, the. Okay. That's the solar article. All right. So the kennels thing. Okay, go ahead. So it's just this is the definitions for, which jibe with what the state has for de definitions. And and what was the definition of a kennel there? Oh boy. Is it really long? Yes. No. yes. Well, there's a bunch of different definitions. Oh, yes. oh, oh okay. Yeah. Commercial kennel, personal oh, kennel. kennel. Etc. Yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please definitely. don't make me read them all. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, for the planning board to approve Article 17. Second. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Woof. Okay. <laughs> is that a positive or negative? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. One Aye. woof is a positive, two woofs is a negative. Okay. <laughs> to uh, 18. This is also kennels, and in this one, we're also moving from agricultural uses to residential uses. That's, yep, that's I remember that one. Yep. And you got your. Personal. That was the only change that we had in that one. Is that correct? Yeah, we um we had residential uses for commercial kennels, and then we had commercial uses under the commercial kennels. So we moved, separated those two. Oh, up. okay. Oh, that's right. We, we had two separate sections. Oh, okay, that's right. So I'll I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, for the planning board to approve. Article 18. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 19, again, is kennels, and this is under the special uses, or special uh, permits, and it lists out commercial boarding kennels, uh, commercial breeders. So this just puts this in that list now. For a, for approved use. Special permits. For approved uses okay. under a special permit. And this is Article 19. This is right? Article 19. Okay, I'll make a motion for the planning board to approve Article so 19. 12. Is that, Second. Is that page 12? Uh, page nine. 9 is where it starts. Is it, so it's a 9. Sorry. Uh, that must. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that it? Or is it no, we got Article 20. Oh, oh. And this deals with personal kennels. So this would be allowed uses um, in the off-highway no. district and just adds kennels, uh, comma, personal. Oh, to the uses? To the use table. Yeah. Okay. I mean, to, uh, the, uh, to the to the allowed uses as a list. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion uh, for the planning board to recommend approval of Article 20. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No 21 is uh, the moratorium on medical marijuana treatment centers, and this is to remove, to strike through the existing language for medical marijuana yeah, treatment centers. 
and which is the, the one that was voted on last year for yeah. yes and, repla yeah. and replace it with other language. and then we replacing it or is and that then a we're replacing that oh. actually yeah under the same article we're replacing it with the medical marijuana dispensaries and that's article 21 that's article 21 yes okay I'll make a motion for the planning board to appro recommend approval of article 21 second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. Oh, and just by the way, there was some language in there about the planning director and the director of transportation, and we just changed that to town planner, which I would work with the planning board anyway. And I think that recommendation was in there, though, <coughs> when yeah. we first talked about it. Yep. And that is it. Excellent. Schedule the next meeting done. Remember the town meeting. Next week. Better look at them online. Tuesday. I, I don't know what they're going to do about this, but, <laughs> but it looks like they really need to reissue this thing. Yeah, they're going to have to do it. You said they were mailed? Yeah, yeah, I got mine in the mail today. Oh. Yeah. Correspondence. Yeah, yeah, Is there anything that any new business that anyone wants to mention? <clears throat> no? Got, yeah, Motion to adjourn? No, 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 Vouchers and then that lot uh, place. Yeah. I reviewed the minutes of October 28th and they are fine. We <laughs> made one correction, but other than that, they're fine. You're going to make a motion to accept? Motion to accept the meeting minutes for October 28th, 2014. <coughs> this is just the lot release. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just upon those two lots, you guys. And released, I have reviewed so. the tape. You signed. Yeah. All, right. All right. Betsy, did you get that? Yep. Jeff reviewed the, the uh, tape for the uh, meeting he missed. Awesome. I will have you sign. Oh, does that have to get put into the minutes? We actually Doesn't hurt. We actually have a form. You sign it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That gets put in, in part of the public record. I owe you a form for <laughs> early <laughs> winding hollow. You go to sign that while people are signing this because do we have a motion to adjourn? Things so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.